ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ariel Helwani's MMA Show! Back in your life on this Monday, February 4th, 2019. Hello again, everyone. I'm Ariel Hawani. Welcome back to the program. Hope you had a lovely weekend. I had a great weekend. Thank you for asking. I was in California for the beginning portion of the weekend. I'll tell you about that perhaps later in the program. But of course, I enjoyed the UFC on ESPN+. Plus. This past Saturday from Fortaleza, Brazil. What a card it was. And yes, if you follow me on Twitter, you know how excited I was about the fact that the card just flew by. It was over by 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Remember when this whole thing started and some of you were complaining about ESPN Plus and 499? Look, no one's telling me to say this, but I told you, be patient. It's a new era. The 1 a.m. end times, they're over. They're done with. It's going to be quicker. It's going to be like other sports. You know when you watch a baseball game, there's not an allotted time. It's not just three hours, and if an inning goes one, two, three, they'll just kill some time. That's not how it works. No. If it's a one, two, three inning, you come back for the fourth right away. You don't kill time, and that's what we saw on Saturday. It flew by. It was fun. It was quick. We were done by 1030. We didn't know what to do with our time afterwards. Great performances. I agree with my former colleague at MMA Fighting, Chuck Mindenhall, a.k.a. the man in the hat. That was pretty much as perfect of a card that the UFC can hope for. Big performances from veterans, great main event, young studs coming through, had it all. Great crowd, so a very nice start to the era, to the UFC on ESPN Plus era. This weekend, of course, it's UFC 234 in Melbourne, the first pay-per-view card of the year, Robert Whitaker versus one Kelvin Gaslam for the middleweight title and then the people's main event, because let me tell you, it is the people's main event. Israel Adesanya against Anderson Silva in the co-main event. We're going to talk about Saturday night in Fortaleza. We're going to talk about UFC 234. A lot has happened since we last spoke as I knocked down my Slurpee Cup. Of course, Nevada Athletic Commission hearing this past Tuesday, the Khabib Nurmagomedov, Conor McGregor, John Jones stuff. A lot going on, as always, in the world of mixed martial arts. Let me run down today's lineup, and then we shall get to our first guest of the day. Because I am excited, my friends. New era, 1030. Did you notice? 1030. It ended at 1030 Eastern Time. At that point, we were just getting rolling on a six-fight, three-hour main card in the old era. 1030. It was just amazing. It was so exciting. I was so happy watching it on my app. I mean, really, no one's telling me to say this, but it's it's just it's just great. This is the norm. Get used to it. New era. It is upon us. All right. Here's the lineup. 345, the aforementioned Robert Whitaker will stop by the reigning defending UFC middleweight champion. He'll be on the program. And what a mensch this guy is. Waking up at 7.45 a.m. Tuesday morning in Sydney. He's off to Melbourne uh, tomorrow to go headline UFC 234 at the Rod Laver Arena. He'll be waking up early for us. Also waking up early, Israel Adesanya. He's already in Melbourne getting ready for that big match. And look at that photo that our director Jay chose. I mean, you talk about foreshadowing. There's Israel, but look who's in back of him. Look at that. That's Robert Whitaker. Blurry Robert Whitaker. Are we foreshadowing something? Does Jay know something that we don't know? What's happening here? This is a tremendous photo. I don't know where this photo was taken. It looks like maybe the Tough Gym. Whatever the case may be, this is great stuff. So we've got Israel, we've got Robert uh, Robert talking about UFC 234 this weekend. Leon Edwards will stop by. He was part of that press conference in London this past week. Him and Darren Till going toe-to-toe. Back and forth they went. Of course, he's scheduled to fight Gunnar Nelson on March 16th in London. ESPN Plus card. I'm looking forward to talking to Rocky Edwards, who's been trying to get a big fight. A little disappointed that he didn't get the main event, so I think he'll be fired up. The always controversial, the always polarizing Ali Abdelaziz at this point, uh, hard to argue against the fact that he is the most powerful manager in the sport. He'll be stopping by at 245. There's a lot going on in his world. He's got Gaslam headlining this card in Melbourne on Saturday. Marlon Moraes with the big win this past Saturday against Hafel Sunsau, another 
client of his. He's got a lot going on. We'll talk to Ali at 2.45. One of his clients is Islam Makhachev. He's looking for a fight. He'll be joining us for the first time on this program at 2.25 from Dagestan. So that's very exciting. We'll talk to Islam at 2.25. The GOAT, Artem Lobov, is no longer a UFC fighter. He'll stop by at 2.05 to talk about why he was released, where he goes from here. Looking forward to talking to him. Ben Askren stole the show at the UFC 235 press conference on Thursday afternoon in Las Vegas. Him and Dana White, him and Kamar Usman backstage in front of the crowd. All that and more. Ben Askren getting ready for his UFC debut. It's always fun talking to funky Ben Askren. He'll stop by at 145. Aspen Ladd will stop by at 135. Talk about why her fight against Holly Holm is not happening anymore on March 2nd. So I'm looking forward to talking to Aspen Ladd about where she goes from here. I know she's very frustrated. And that news kind of just dropped out of nowhere. You'll recall we had Holly Holm on the show last week. And it seemed like all systems were a go. Well, apparently not. We shall see. Marlon Moraes will stop by at 1.20, talk about his big win over Rafael Sunsau, the call out afterwards, his sickness. He said he had the runs in one of the more memorable post-fight interviews in recent memory. And by the way, shout out to Michael Bisping, who did a great job in his color commentary debut. But the story of Saturday, of course, was Marlon, the former WSOF 135-pound champion, avenging his loss in 2017 against one Rafael Sunsau, finishing him just the second man to finish Rafael Sunsau, the first being Uriah Faber almost a decade ago, and really cementing his place atop the bantamweight rankings. And in my opinion, he should be next for a title shot. They need to figure out the situation with Henry Cejudo and the flyweights ASAP because it's becoming a mess. Someone needs to address this because all the speculation, all the rumors, all the innuendo, all the talk, I mean, it's just becoming a headache at this point. Just tell us what you're doing with the division so we can all move on with their lives and understand who's fighting next for the belt in the respective weight classes okay we need to figure this out asap marlon deserves it henry cejudo uh in my opinion should stay at 125 he's doing a phenomenal job of being the face of that division now of going out there and promoting do him versus joseph benavidez do marlon marais versus tj dillashaw and let's move on with our lives in a matter of moments we're going to be joined by one of the big stories from this past weekend johnny walker who had another great performance in the octagon his second ufc win officially of course a product of the dana white contender series show here's some some factoids about johnny walker and what he did saturday night in fortaleza at 15 seconds his win was the fifth fastest knockout in ufc light heavyweight history the fastest light heavyweight knockout since anthony johnson knocked out glover Teixeira in just 13 seconds at ufc 202 he is on a roll he has 16 career wins 13 of which have come in the first Round. And one more stat about one Johnny Walker. He earned the sixth knockout in UFC history by spinning back fists. Shoney Carter, John McDessie, Paul Felder, Douglas Silva, Deon Drudge, and Alexander Rakic are the others to score a knockout via spinning back fist. There's a sixth man that you need to add to that list. His name is Johnny Walker, and he is a fan favorite. A lot of people are very excited about him. And let us now say hello to him for the first time on this show. He joins us via the phone. Johnny, how are you, my friend? Parabéns. Thank you. I'm here, my friend. I'm okay. How are you? I'm doing great. Wow. Congratulations on another big win. Uh, on I don't know what I was more impressed with, Johnny. Your, your, well, your dancing going into the cage, your knockout in the cage, or your dancing after the fight. It was all very impressive. Do you feel like you're just on cloud nine at this point? It seems like everything is going well for you. You couldn't dream of a better start to your UFC career. Another bonus. This must be one of the most exciting moments of your life, just how things have started. Yeah, this is so excited for me. I'm so happy. I'm proud by myself, you know. And, man, I can't wait to fight again. I have too many things to show everybody. This is no John Rock. John Rock have much, much more than this. Uh, we're looking at your finish right now. It was amazing, the, the spinning back fist and then the, the punches afterwards, 15 seconds. Were you Was that part of the game plan to start like that, or is that just something that came to you as the fight was starting? No man, this is this is the fight. This is only happening like natural, you know. And I, I only follow the way, my friend. I let I let it happen, and then my hands talk to me, you know. My hands talk to, for me. Okay, but what about the kick? Because I was very worried about the kick, Johnny, because it seemed like it may have connected when I watched it initially in real time. But then when we saw the, the replay, it looked like you missed him ever so slightly. What were you thinking when you threw that kick? Because as you know, if you would have landed the kick when he was on the ground, you would have been disqualified. Yes, man. Man, I'm professional. I have a good good end. 
the angle, angle, the camera is taking me to the wrong place, you know, the angle. But I, I only want to kick his belly, not his head. I know I can, I cannot do this, you know. I want to kick his belly. But the, the angle camera, camera, the camera angle uh, records like wrong place, you know. But I want to kick his belly, not his face. Okay. How close was it to his face from your perspective? Very far. It's not close. Okay. All right. Um, and then the worm afterwards, is that something you practice? Are you, are you like a break dancer? Do you have another life that we need to know about? No, man, this is natural. This is because I have so many energy to spend because yeah. I'm ready for five hours or more. Then I have to spend my energy because if I don't do this, I'll be stressed. You know, I stress myself. I want to spend my energy. What was it like for you, Johnny, to be back in Brazil? Because I know you said in the past that you felt like you needed to go elsewhere. You needed to go to Europe in order to make the proper money to fight, to train. And in the past, you've represented other countries on your Reebok uniform because you felt like you weren't getting the, the, the attention and the, the funds that you deserve in Brazil. To be back in Brazil as a UFC fighter and to see the love that they gave you, how did that make you feel? Yeah, I come back to Brazil, I see my family, my friends, and now everybody starts to, to know me, but I have too many to, to show. General Alcas have too many, many more, my friend, many more. This is only the beginning for me, you know, this this starts to, to my dream. I have to grow my dream now. Is there a part of you that thinks, where were you, you know, to the Brazilian people? Where were you when I was trying to, to come up, when I was trying to make it to the UFC? Oh, of course. You know, you're on the bandwagon now, but I needed you a couple of years ago. Is there any part of you that feels that way? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. And so will you now train in Brazil from, from here on out now that you have a little more money or are you going to still train? I know you trained in Thailand for this fight. You've trained in Europe as well. Are you, are you still going to train outside of Brazil for your fights? Yes, yes. I'll come back to Thailand in two weeks, I think, because I have one gym now there in Shalong, Phuket. Then I'll start my camp train there. I invited everybody, if you want to train with me, only go to Thailand. My gym is open for everybody to train with me, you know. Can you tell me the story about why you left Brazil? Um, from what I understand, there was a man who lived in Scotland who said that he was going to pay you to train there, but then all of a sudden, a month later, he said that he didn't have any more money, and then you went to train with someone else, and that guy got arrested. It was a very strange start to your run there. Could you tell us what happened exactly? <laughs> Yeah, my friend, have, it's a big, big story because I, I left Brazil to go to to Scotland to train, and because one guy make a proposal for me, give a proposal, give yeah. me money, place to sleep, everything, gym to train. But after one month, the guy don't give me nothing, and you know, like don't make the, don't, don't steal with his words, you know, it's not, no kept his, his word. Right. Then I have to to make money by. With my friends, you know, and uh, try fast one, one way to survive because it's so hard, you know, the beginning of the career, the fight is so hard. And I, I, I never quit, my friend. I, I always keep going, training without food sometimes, without money. But I'm here now, you know, and now I can do everything. Now you feel a little more comfortable, right? Yeah, of course. UFC gives me the opportunity, then. I, I have the opportunity now. Now I can do it. Now, now, now I will do everything. I will be a champion. Early on in 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 your career, when you were trying to make money, when you were trying to find a place to to fight, you said like you were starving at times. You were looking for a home. Did you ever think I don't know how much longer I can do this without making money? I might have to quit and and go get a real job. Never, never, never get up. You always believed that you would get this opportunity. Yeah, of course. I believe in myself. You know, I believe God. I believe in myself. And follow me, Johnny Walker UFC, my Instagram guys. <laughs> yes. Uh, and, and okay, so I have to keep more sponsor now. You know, I have no sponsor yet. You don't have a single sponsor, even after these two fights mm -hmm. in the UFC. Nobody. No, I think people don't believe me yet. I have to beat some more guys. You know, more impressive guys because people don't sponsor me yet. I feel like there's a natural sponsor. It has to be Johnny Walker, the actual, you know, the, the liquor company, right? Isn't <laughs> yeah. that the, have you My or your people talked to them? 
Yes, yeah, people are always ask about this one, but this is, this is only my name because my, my dad called Walter, my mom called Joelma, then Johnny Walker, you know, because J and, and W, but nothing with whiskey. <laughs> But my understanding is that your your real first name is Walker and your last name is Johnny. Yeah. Is that accurate? And you and you yeah. switched the two? Walker Johnny. Walker Johnny. So when did you switch it to Johnny yeah. Walker? Because I, I like Johnny. I like people call me Johnny. Yeah. Did you know about when you switch it? Did you know about the the liquor company? No. I you, I know the the whiskey company, but uh, I I changed not not because the the not because this. Only because I like John, but maybe I can get some sponsor by by them. Yes, we need to figure that out ASAP. Um, you used to work as an engineer, correct? Or you at least were, went to school to be an engineer? Did you ever actually work as an engineer? No, I don't work. I only start like six months to engineer, chemical engineer, chemi chemistry engineer. Wow. Then I stop to only to, to train, you know. I want to be an engineer. When I have time, maybe I come back to school. But now I don't have time to study. Only to train. If I want to be a champ, I have to train hard. You know. Right. What kind of engineer? Uh, chemistry. Wow, that's incredible. Uh, so when you're done hard, your your career, very hard. You need time to study or right. study or train. You're a very smart guy. Yeah, I try. I, <laughs> I try my best. Yes, I'm not a smart guy. I don't think I could ever pull that off. So that's incredible. Not only are you a great fighter, but you're a smart guy. You're book smart as well. So you said that you need to get the attention. You need to get the big fights. You need to get pushed. Who makes sense for you next? Do you have any idea? Man, I'm I'm not rushed. You know, I'm 26 years old. Anybody, anywhere, anytime, I'm ready. With people now, you know, the light heavyweight division, as you know, it needs some new names. It needs some fresh faces. Do you feel like they're going to push here. you? I'm here. Walker. Yes. And you're ready for the top five guys, you think? Or do you want a, a fight or two before you are fighting those kind of fighters? Man, I'm ready for anyone, anywhere, anytime. I told you. Yes. Only, and, only, 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 only call me. I'm ready. How soon do you want to return? Uh, today? <laughs> If you want, if somebody want to fight, I'm ready today. So if the UFC says we need someone in Melbourne this weekend, you would take that fight. Only pay my flight ticket and I'll be there. Wow! And how how has your life changed? You got two performance bonuses on top of your purse. How how has, have you like have you ever had this much money in your bank? Never, my friend. I don't know what I do with so much money. I what, never have this money before. What are you gonna do? Do you have any plans for it? Ah, I will help my family, man. My family never have like good money, you know. Then I have to finish my mom's house, help my pay some bills, and help my family. And only this, this is make me happy. When you started your your UFC, excuse me, when your MMA career, when you started it, or even your UFC career, how much money did you have to your name? Before? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Zero. I, sometimes I fight for free. You fought for free fought in your life. Free. Sorry? You fought for free professionally. Yeah, sometimes yes. Only only cuz I want to make my my you know, I have to beat some guys. I I know to I go to big events, I have to beat many guys. Then sometimes I I, I fight for free because they guy give me opportunity and then I go. Then I fight sometimes. How recently? Like when was the last time you fought for free? Last time? Yeah. Uh, I said London. And the guy pay only the the, 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 the travel, you know? Wow. For me, in London. That's not that long belt. ago. That's like a couple of years ago. Yeah. Last year. Last year? You were fighting for free? Yeah. Yeah. Did they tell you that they were going to pay you and then they lied to you or you knew that you were, you were not going to get paid anything? They didn't lie to me. They don't, like they don't like to me. Okay. Wow. That is unbelievable. Well, those days are over, this my friend. This for the title. Yeah. For the title, you, you got no money? Yeah. Well, now you're doing well. Everyone's talking about you. The belt. The belt is making me happy. Right, right. And what, what makes you upset, Johnny? Because you're always smiling. When you're walking to the cage, you're smiling. After the fight, you're smiling. Does anything bother you? No, man. I'm happy. I'm born happy. <laughs> 
I'm happy anyway. I don't need money to be happy, you know. Right. I fight because I love it. I'm born for this. I feel happy when I fight. Then I'm happy. You beat Henrik De Silva in the uh, Contender Series in August. Then you come back and beat Khalil Roundtree in your debut. Um, I think opening everyone's eyes in just a minute and 57 seconds. That was back in November. And then Justin Ledet this past weekend, 15 seconds. Unbelievable spinning back fist. And then the punches on the ground. Thank God that, that kicked in a land. You say it wasn't close. I'm happy to hear that. Johnny, congratulations on how your career has started in the UFC. This has been a lot of fun to watch. You are, uh, you are definitely a player at 205, and everyone is on notice. And uh, I want you to keep smiling, keep dancing, keep doing your thing, because it's been a lot of fun watching you thus far. Great to meet you as well. Congratulations, and we'll talk to you very soon. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. Have a good day. I don't know if it's day or night there, but <laughs> God bless you. God bless you as well. It is day over here, and we are all talking and thinking about Johnny Walker, one of the big stars from this past weekend in Fortaleza, Brazil. What a performance. Again, 15 seconds. He debuts in August on the Contender Series show, and his last two fights have gone a combined two minutes and, what, 12 seconds? The big win over Khalil Roundtree, the knockout in the first round back in Argentina and then the win over Justin Ledet this past weekend. What a performance. Unbelievable. He says that it wasn't close. It looked super close to me. Uh, it looked like it initially, actually, when I saw it in real time, I thought it actually hit and that would have been devastating. Um, but then they showed the replay and it didn't look like it was quite all there. It didn't look like it connected. He says that he was actually aiming for the chest. Thank God. Didn't really seem like he needed to even throw that. Um, but he says he wasn't aiming for the head. So I am happy to hear that he is still 2-0. and And now I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with him next because they've got options for this guy. And Lord knows 205 pounds needs it. Lord knows they need it. They need some fresh faces. No doubt about that. Johnny Walker is one of those guys. Way better than Walker Johnny. Johnny Walker, wherever you're, you're at, not the, the fighter, but the company, the liquor company, sign this man. Give him a sponsorship deal. He's doing great things in the octagon with a big smile on his face. This is the kind of guy that you need. You know it would be smart if Proper 12 got behind him to stick it. I don't know if it's, that's in the same you know, ballpark as far as you know, actual like liquor goes, but it would be a nice little turn of events. Okay, let us move along. Of course... Biggest story of Saturday, Marlon Marais. What a performance in the main event against Rafael Sunsau. He submits a Sunsau via guillotine choke in just three minutes and 17 seconds. He avenges his loss to a Sunsau, the super close split decision loss back in 2017, and he has now cemented his place atop the rankings. He should be fighting for a title next. He needs to be fighting for a title next. He is the number one contender at 135 pounds, and now he's joining us via the magic of Skype. There he is, Magic Marlon Marais. Marlon, how are you? I'm very good, man. I made the way back home. Everything good. I'm safe, and I'm happy with the, with the victory. Well, congratulations on the victory. What a performance out of you. I have to ask you, first and foremost, how are you feeling, Marlon? Because uh, in the post-fight interview, you told us about a very tough week that you had. You had the runs, which is the worst thing in the world. How are you feeling now? Man, I feel way better. Uh, I never had anything in a fight week before. And I never thought about pull out of the fight, any fight. And I, I start thinking a lot on, on my room, like, man, start fight, I was 11, 12, and I never pull out a fight. And imagine I tell I have diarrhea. People are going to say I'm scared. You know, I can't pull out a fight with that, you know. You have any and idea how that happened? Like wh why you were sick or what happened to you? I think it's something with Fortaleza, Brazil. I heard a lot of, a lot of people from the UFC crew, they got it. Two of my coaches got it. Oh. Uh, some of the fighters got it. My my opponent, uh, Saeed, my training partner, Saeed Nurmagomedov opponent got it. I think it's, it's like a, a, a virus, you know, and it's, it's crazy. I was very weak Tuesday, and when, when, when I got it, I spent almost all, all Tuesday night. I, I couldn't sleep at all. And I woke up Wednesday and I had to do UFC obligations and it was very hard. But those two days uh, helped me out the Saturday night, go, out, go in there, you know, and leave everything I had. Come Saturday, you're in the locker room, you're preparing. Are you still feeling sick or at that point, did you feel like it was behind you? No, no, I was fine. I took some, some medicine and, and helped me, you know, with my stomach. 
because man, I had to. I wasn't wasn't stopping at all. How close were you to pulling out? Man, I thought about. And wow. I said, man, I don't want to pull out, so I gotta call somebody. I gotta call somebody that's not gonna tell me to pull out. <laughs> and I said, man, who would never pull out a fight? And I thought about it and I said, nah, I know somebody. I called Frankie at 7 a.m. And he woke up like, man, what's going on? You know, what happened? You up? Now, what? You, everything okay? I said, man, it's not okay, man. I was all night on the bathroom. I don't know what to do, how to get better. And he like, man, don't worry. It's only Wednesday. You're going to be fine. The fight is only Saturday. <laughs> that, that's, you, you're going to get better. Don't worry. <laughs> Yeah, nice to have like one of the toughest and people I, ever in the sport yeah, give you advice. Yeah, I, for, I just I just forgot about, and I just thought about get better, and mentally, I thought about man when we are, we are cutting weight, we are getting ourselves dehydrated. So, I'm dehydrating, and it's just the same. Uh, I'm gonna be better. I'm gonna be back, and I'm I'm gonna be able to fight. You don't usually seem to need need help cutting weight. Did this? Did this really help you? Did you feel like it was actually happening faster as a result of how you were feeling? The problem is I was feeling very weak. So I was drinking coconut water. I was drinking some fluid. So my weight wasn't going down. I, I couldn't let this happen. I need to manage. And I think the cut was just Sam, but I just felt felt weaker, you know. And even Wednesday, I went in the, in the, in the elevator. I was going to do the... You can see, man, if you watch the MMA junkie and the YouTube interviews that was on Wednesday, that wasn't myself. I wasn't there, man. I was very, very, very sick. And I I did all the two obligations, and I went inside the elevator, and who comes in? Rafael and some father and brother. Oh. And they look, they look at me, and they're like, man, you all right? And I look at them, yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm fine. <laughs> I wasn't fine, you know? I wasn't fine at all. Did you feel like you needed to end the fight quickly because of how you were feeling? No, man. When I walk in there, I felt ready, man. I was sparring every day. Just get rounds with Zabi, Timur Valiev, Saeed, uh, Maga. These guys are like this, you know. They get me ready for anything. And I, I, the training camp was very good. So I was training hard and putting myself in the worst case scenario. So that day being a little sick, being a little weaker was just another day on the off. Uh, we've talked in the past about how Hafel is a grinder and it's hard to look good against him. You looked very good against him. Did you feel, I can't let this fight go to the judges. I can't let the same thing that happened last time happen to me. Like, I need to put an exclamation point and separate myself from this guy. You, you did that on Saturday, but was that part of your mindset going into the fight? My mindset was be me, you know, do what I was doing training. And I like to say, man, Mark plays a big point on this fight camp. He read a lot about Rafael's game, about what he was going to do and how play out the last fight. And Towers this week, uh, Eddie Alvarez, he called me and he saw a lot of good important things on the, our last fight. We have like guys on the camp studying him and we, we mix it up. We put all together. And we went in there and we did it. It's not just me, man. It's all these guys. So it's one thing for people like me to say, you're the number one contender. You should be fighting for the belt next. But I don't know how you feel. I am frustrated that no one comes out and says, this is a number one contender fight. Marlon's fighting for the belt. We don't know what's going on at 125. We don't know what's going on at 135. What is going on? Has anyone told you now, two days later, are you fighting for the belt next? Man. If you ask me, I feel like I'm I'm the 135 pounder champion. I'm the best 135 pounder in the world. Um, the guy, the champion, he went down and he just lost in the 32nd matchup against the 25er. So I feel like I'm the champion. Whatever they want to do, if they want to bring him up, I'm going to be very happy to welcome him and, and settle this, you know. But right now, I, I have no talk about any fight or anything. My only focus is Go in there and fight for the belt. That's it. That, that's no talk, you know. If it's not the belt, you know, we're going to move forward and see what I'm going to do, you know, because I'm in this sport to be a champion, 
and time comes and times now and that's it man that's nothing that's not nothing to discuss i'm going to fight for the title point that's it you said afterwards that you want a new contract how many fights do you have left on this current contract man i have fight left and i want a new one but i want to fight for the belt i'm only taking the new one if the belt's on the line if it's not on the line i'm not taking it Wait, so just to be clear, you said you have one fight left? Yes. Wow. So if they don't give you a title shot next with the new contract, you're saying you're going to fight out your contract? Man, I just I just want to do what I work for and what I earn. I don't I'm not asking for anything. I earn it. I put down three guys, three top 5 guys. I did what people never done before, finished three guys in the first round and what statement I need to do more, you know what I have to do more to prove how good I am. I'm living my dream. I I I took cuts. I did a lot of sacrifice. Now it's time to get what I earn, you know? That's it. Yes. Yes. I like it, Marlon. That's great. And I love what you said in the cage afterwards, sort of along the same lines of what you said on this show a couple of weeks ago, saying that you were embarrassed by TJ Dillashaw. The, the, the post-fight interview from you, we don't usually see that kind of heat from you in, in, in the cage as far as what you said to TJ when, when Michael told you to give him a message. I like it. I, I like this fired up Marlon Marais. Yeah, man. Like I said the last time, you know, you need to get this division back again, you know. Um, I I don't want to use Trump, Trump, but we gotta make America great again, <laughs> man. You know. Is it a little awkward, Marlon? Um, if if you could be honest about it, your management represents Henry Cejudo and you, and he's trying to fight for the one thirty five title now. How are we gonna figure this out? I don't care who manages him. If he steps on the thirty five division, he's gonna go down just like any other thirty five. Do you have any idea what they're going to push for? Because just uh, you know, last week it seemed like they were pushing for Henry to fight for the 135 belt. Man, I help with them. I just finished three guys in the world. If they want to promote and sell the fight, they know who they got to put for the belt. Do you, do you know when TJ is ready? Have they given you any insight? I don't know. I know I'm ready. I've been working so much for this long time. And it's no talk. That's nothing. I don't want to discuss anything. That's it. That's the title shot. And I want to get what's mine. And I want to fix all the situation. Um, you know, w when you compare the last three fights that you've had, incredible performances. I mean, th this rivals what you were doing in WSOF. And I would argue it's even better given, you know, how tough these opponents are. And then you compare it to your first fight in the UFC. Is it fair to say that maybe the first fight, you know, you chalk that performance up to, oh, it was your, you know, octagon jitters, because the Marlon that we've seen in the last three fights, very different than the guy who debuted against Rafael Sunsell. Man, I don't like to make excuses, you know. I think I just had a bad fight, no excuse, but the guy in that cage was me, you know. It wasn't anybody else. I wasn't there. We just took that fight. We took that loss. We worked hard. We asked for opportunities. We got fight. We kept getting better. We kept working. Uh, the guys believe in me. And I'm here. I'm here. I, I'm four fight win straight, three finishes, and I'm on my way to get the, the belt. What was it like being back in Brazil, you know, for the first time since that fight, now on this winning streak? Did you feel more love? Did you feel like the, the fans there were treating you like a star? A little bit, you know. I love Brazil. But it's it's hard to go fight there, you know. And I I like to fight in America too. Uh, have all the coaches, everybody. It was good to go there, but uh, he was fighting home. I was I was five hours from okay from my from my town. But I had couple couple people going, couple friends, couple family members, and it was good, you know. It was it was good to fight and and give them a victory. And so you come right back home, and you're a dad again, right? No, no one at home cares that you just beat Rafael Sunsau via submission in the first round. Your two kids just want dad back, right? Yeah, Rafael, Rafael, my Rafael now wants attention. He wants to fight me all day, and Ryan too, and I'm here. Now I'm, I'm the dad. 
did your old how old is your oldest son again halfway out four four did, does he understand what what you do now yeah he does he does he did not watch but he knows he watched a little bit after and he wants to single like me he's doing wrestling already and he wants to fight me oh i want to punch you i want to punch you <laughs> oh, you're not punching me I'm, I'm i'm tired i just just blow my home i'm tired that just fought Give me a break. <laughs> so you don't let him watch it live, but if all goes well, you'll let him watch it after the fact? Just pieces, you know. I don't want him to keep this on his head. And right. Just I just let him watch a little bit. Well, I'm sure he's very proud of you. I'm sure your family is very proud of you. I hope you get that title shot. I hope that they do you versus TJ. I hope they do Cejudo versus Benavidez. They keep the flyweight division. Enough of all this drama. Let's let's keep all the weight classes and let the rightful contenders fight for the belt. You certainly deserve it at 135 pounds. What a performance once again from you, Marlon. It's been a pleasure watching you do your thing now in WSOF and now coming over to the UFC. It's an incredible run that you're on. Congratulations. Enjoy your time with your family. And thanks, as always, for coming on the show. Man, thank you so much, man. Pleasure is mine. And I want to thank you all my coaches, you know, Mark, Ricardo, uh, Ryan, Frankie, went, they all went there for me, my training partners, and uh, Zabi, Timur Valiev, all these guys been helping me, Nick Caton. I'm very thankful and very blessed to have these people in my life. And let's go, guys. Let's get the belt. And now we're going to be champions. Talk to you soon, Marlon. Thank you. Magic Marlon Marais with another impressive win, his fourth in a row, split decision win over John Dodson. Then he followed that up with the vicious knockout in just 67 seconds against Aljamain Sterling in December of 2017. Followed that up with the 33-second knockout of Jimmy Rivera back in June of last year. And then Saturday night in Brazil, he defeats Rafael Sunsau in 3 minutes and 17 seconds. A Rafael Sunsau that is so tough to beat, so tough to finish, you know, this is a guy who just makes opponents look tough. And, and, and you feel for Rafael Sunsau because it's almost like, and and I believe, again, I believe it was Chuck Mendenhall who said this on Twitter on Saturday. He's good enough to warrant getting a title shot off of, victory off of him, but because of his personality, perhaps because of his style, not good enough, quote unquote, to get a title shot. Hard to market him in that spot. His record would certainly warrant a title shot, especially had he defeated Marlon Marais again. You feel for him that he had to do it all over again, but this is the scenario that I think the UFC wanted because of how Marlon fights, because of how entertaining he is. This is a very special fighter who is doing special things at you know World Series of Fighting, comes over to the UFC, stumbles ever so slightly against Rafael Sunsau, but since then has been on a roll, and I just don't understand why the UFC doesn't come out and say, this is the number one contender. Can you imagine him versus TJ Dillashaw, how great of a fight that would be? Look, I understand why they wanted to do the Cejudo Dillashaw fight. It was fun. It was champion versus champion. It was the first ESPN Plus card. I get all of that. I really do. It made it feel big. It made it feel historic. It made it feel special. It was great for January 19th in Brooklyn. That's the main event that was perfect for the first ESPN Plus card. No argument. But now let's move on. So Hudo wants to stay at 125. Dillashaw got his chance. It didn't work out. Let him defend that title at 135 against the number one contender, a guy who I think now has won 17 of 18. And let's see Benavidez versus Cejudo too. The first fight was amazing. I wanted to see five rounds of that. It only went three. It was a close fight. Let's just move on. It doesn't seem like it. As I said last week on the program, it seems like they are slowly phasing out the flyweights. Even Cejudo told the media in, in Brazil this past weekend that he's afraid, that it seems like his his work is for naught, his campaigning is for naught. They're getting, if, if, if you lose, you're pretty much done. If you're on a winning streak, they'll give you the option of going to 135 or let you kind of fight it out until you lose. I don't get it. I truly don't get it. Cejudo feels like a star. He's fun. He's charismatic. His fights are fun these days. I don't understand the insistence. It does not seem like it's worth it. You, you, you finally have a guy that you feel like you can get behind, that you feel like you can sell. You feel like you can market. Olympic gold medalist. Trilingual. We've gone through the credentials time and again. Keep that division. Have Marlon fight TJ. That's a phenomenal main event. Let's go. And and Marlon needs to get some pub as well. I know he's not the most, you know, 
brash guy out there, but he does feel like the best fighter that no one knows about in the UFC for whatever reason. Part of that's on them. Part of that's on him. I understand that. But what a performance Saturday night for Marlon Moraes. Matter of moments, we're going to be joined by a 135-pounder in the female division, Aspen Ladd. I think that we're trying to connect with her. If we can't get her on Skype, all right. Aspen Ladd's going to join us in a matter of seconds. Of course, I have to mention Jose Aldo before uh, Aspen comes on the program. What a performance from him. He turns back the clock again. Vintage Aldo, two straight finishes. Uh, you know, uh, reminds us of the Aldo from WEC when he was fighting the likes of Cub Swanson and Mike Brown. A finisher, a vicious finisher. Just going out there and looking to end the fight early. That's the Aldo we love. And I am so happy about the fact that Jose Aldo is not going to be defined by that 13-second loss to Conor McGregor. He lost fair and square, and Conor should wear that feather in his cap all day long. But I was afraid that if he never rebounded from that, he would forever be defined by that loss. He would be the guy who lost to Conor in 13 seconds, and everything that he did up until that point and even a little bit afterwards would always be overshadowed by that loss. Now it feels like there's enough separation that his last two fights in particular have just been so great, so dominant. Jeremy Stevens, and then this past weekend against Hanato Moicano, it feels like we are now fully over that loss in the sense that it won't be, you know, line number one because it shouldn't be line number one. You should never be defined by one night. I don't care how dramatic or how, you know, how, how bad of a loss it was. You should never be defined by one night. And I'm happy that it feels like finally he is not going to be defined by that one night and that he is able to move on, that he's able to be happy, enjoy his career, and, 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 and really start to go on this final run, whether it's for a belt, whether it's for you know 150, I don't care. Just have big fights, have big performances, be celebrated by your people. Good for you, Jose Aldo. Very happy to see him back in the winner's circle. Okay, let's move along. Last week, we had Holly Holm on the program. And then, you know, it seemed like all was good with UFC 235. She was going to fight on the same card as her teammates, John Jones and Diego Sanchez. And, and, and she was excited to be back. And she was excited to fight Aspen Ladd. And then all of a sudden, at the press conference on, on Thursday, Dana White casually says that the fight is off. With not a lot of information added to that statement. So let's talk to Aspen Ladd now and see what's going on with her. She joins us via the magic of Skype. There she is. Aspen, how are you? I'm doing pretty good, considering. Well, okay, so it's a few days later. It happened on Thursday. It's now Monday. How do you feel about this this change of plans? Disappointed, but I'm getting over it at this point. Not over it, per se, as in, oh, boy, that doesn't matter. It's just there's nothing I can do about it, so I'm trying to move on. Have you been told by the UFC, or has your management told by the UFC why they made this switch? I had absolutely no idea. I mean, obviously with the news that's coming out now with the Amanda fight on the horizon, I could assume that's why. But I had no idea. My management had no idea. I don't know if Carly had an idea. It was just something I was training. He got out of the cage and I had 500 missed calls because I found out the same way as everybody else when the wow. press conference came out. So you found out from the media. You found out from other people texting you. No one gave you a heads up before. No, I had no idea until that moment. And did your management talk to the UFC afterwards and try to get an official reason, you know, from them as to why they did this? Of course, but uh, that's not really something we talk about right now. Okay, fair enough. And it seems like they are trying to do this Holly Holm versus Amanda Nunes title fight, although I'm told it's far from official and it may not even happen. But if that is the direction, they take Holly away from you to put her in a title fight. Are you annoyed that you're not getting that? Like, why, why pick Holly and not you? You've never fought for a belt before. No, that doesn't bother me at all. And I said this after my last fight. I'm young in the sport. I don't, I'm not chasing a belt right now. I never have. I just, we're all in the UFC. I've only fought a couple women. Let me fight everybody. The more, the better. So I'm in a different position in my career and in my life than she is. I don't know what Holly wants to do. She, maybe she just wants to have a couple more fights. Maybe she wants to fight for the belt and get out. Who knows? But I got so much time on my hands. Like, all right, well, let's just fight whoever they can offer up. And so why not keep you on the card against someone else? Is that an option? It doesn't appear to be right now, unfortunately. Mm. You want to remain on that card? That's kind of like the last card I was on, the uh, McGregor card. You really can't do better than a uh, John Jones or a McGregor. So, of course, everybody wants to be on that card. But if it's not going to work out fight-wise, opponent-wise, then I guess we'll just have to move on. 
I saw uh, Yana Kunitskaya say that she was willing to fight you. Um, I know I know that she's busy, but it doesn't seem like there's often a lot of people who are campaigning to fight you. What did you make of what she said? Um, that's very nicer, but she's fighting my teammate here coming up, Marion Renault. Yeah. And I'll be watching that fight. So I think she has a uh, more to worry about than me right now. Right. But did you notice that as well? It doesn't like even with this news coming out, I don't see a lot of people campaigning and saying, "Hey, I'm I'm available, volunteering to step in there." Unless I miss them. Did you see any people do that? Unfortunately, no. There was before this last fight, but afterwards, not so much. Yeah. And we've had a few offers, fight offers, and they didn't pan out. We always accept, but the other person hasn't. When you say fight offers, do you say do you mean for this particular card to to replace Holly? No, before Holly, there was two people before that, um, both extremely high ranked, and neither one took the fight. Oh, let's name names. Who are they? <laughs> you already know I can't do that. Why not? What's the put them on blast? I'm not going to stir the pot in that way. I'm just saying there has been other opportunities and we're never the ones turning down the fight. Right. Um, I would imagine given Holly's stature, her name, former champion, this was a really big deal to you, right? This felt like a major step up. Oh, it was great. I mean, I want to fight the best there is, right? Right. And Holly, she is an amazing fighter. She's been in the sport forever. She's been a champion. Number two, like, I was extremely excited about this fight. She was a unique challenge. And that was very disappointing, losing that. The opportunity to show and work with somebody that's been in the sport that long and has been that successful. What was so unique about the challenge she presented? It's her, her stand-up, her striking, her experience level. And it took a very specialized kind of training in my preparation getting ready for this fight just a specialized approach to it. And we are working very hard and very excited, myself and my whole team, to really implement what we've been working on. And then that all kind of went bye-bye last Thursday. Wow. So were you bringing in new people to try to mimic her style? We did have a couple people mimicking her style, but not bringing in so much as we've... I was lucky at the, my camp to have people that are already fighting that way and are southpaw. Uh -huh. So it was just more or less studying her tendencies and really trying to capitalize on what she's going to do naturally. But, yeah. Would you have felt better about all of this if you at least were given the heads up before the rest of the world? I think that would have been the best approach. Uh, that's how I would have handled it. Hey, you're not going to fight, but as anything else, there's really nothing I can do about it. I was shocked, but now just pick up pieces and see what's next. I think that they're mistaking your kindness for, for a weakness. They feel like they could just take this fight away from you because, you know, you don't seem like the typical fighter. You don't seem like you're going to get mad or lash back. But they've got a big problem on their hands because Aspen Ladd is pissed. I'm certainly not happy about it. But <laughs> as I keep saying, nothing I can do. So it really doesn't, it doesn't serve me to get angry, to get pissed, to talk shit, whatever. It doesn't, there's nothing it's going to do to help me. So why should I waste my energy on it? Uh, initially, as I, I think uh, the, the, the camera flipped on us here because you're now sideways. I don't know if something happened there. Did something happen? Okay. Let's see. Did it work? Yeah. No, it's still sideways. But I'll still ask the question. Uh, you tweeted to Holly saying, hey, you know, oh, there it is. No, oh, now it's gone. Anyhow, uh, you tweeted to Holly saying like, look, I signed to fight you. Now it's back. Um, keep it wh whatever you're doing there. Yeah, that's perfect. I signed to fight you, and now you know the 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 fight is gone. Don't back out. But now, can she? Can you still hear me, Aspen? Or you can't hear me. I can't. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. So we'll, I'll just talk to you because uh, the video seems to be frozen. You you seem to be upset at Holly, but now that you know more about this situation, do you, do you hold any? It doesn't seem like she's the one backing out. She found out like you did. She's kind of waiting to see what's next. Do you feel that this is on her or more on the UFC? I think this is probably more of the UFC's decision now that I know a little bit more. Yeah. I think you're right. I think you're right about that. I don't think she, I think she was actually equally as disappointed. Um, even if there might be a title shot waiting in the wings, I think she was upset that she didn't uh, get the heads up either. Yeah. It certainly seems that way, but it's, it's kind of, she didn't know. I didn't know. You're both going to assume the other person did it. 
like, all right, well, I guess management and UFC to make the decisions, whatever. So as of right this moment, you don't know what's next. You don't know if you're on the card. You don't know if you're fighting someone else. You don't know anything. I think it's safe to assume I will not be on that card, unfortunately. Okay. And there's, there's talk of a couple of fights, and we're going to see if either one of them pans out. All right. We'll keep us posted. I'm sorry that this went down this way. I think a lot of people are looking forward to that fight. Big opportunity for you. Great fight for Holly as well. Uh, kind of a bummer. I'm sorry it went down this way. I'm sorry you didn't find out beforehand, but I appreciate you coming on and talking about it, Aspen. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate being here. All right, there she is, Aspen Ladd, stopping by. So unfortunate, UFC 235 is a great card, a, a slight blow to it. We'll see what happens. Last I heard, there was talk, Amanda Nunes talked about this uh, over the weekend, was talk of doing Amanda Nunes versus Holly Holm in uh, Curitiba, May 11th, which is in Brazil, by the way. That's the card that Rose Namajunas is fighting Jessica Andrade on. Um, but as of right now, I heard that's not a done deal or close to a done deal heard there was also some talk of perhaps Jermaine Durandamy stepping in there. So we'll see how that situation pans out. Wouldn't it be something if the fight doesn't materialize and they pulled this fight for nothing? Confusing. Always confusing. Let's see how it plays out. That was a fun one and, uh, and a good opportunity for someone like Aspen to be on the same card as she said, John Jones and Tyron Woodley and Robbie Lawler and Ben Askren, who finally made his official UFC press conference debut on Thursday in Las Vegas, stealing the show both before the press conference, during the press conference, after the press conference. Always a great time talking to funky Ben Askren. He joins us via the magic of Skype. And this guy, I gotta tell you, the the ultimate professional. Look at this setup. Ben, what do you what do you tape in that in that little room over there? Well, I actually just this, so this room is gonna go to my house. Eventually, maybe like a week or two when it's done. So right now, this is like a little vestibule in my wrestling academy. Uh, I actually tape for Rudis. It's uh, we do a wrestling podcast. I actually just knocked out two episodes because I'm I'm gonna be busy this week, uh, Ariel. So we just did uh, our episodes for this week. Which man, I, I I love talking to you and I love talking about fighting, but I do love talking about wrestling even more. Wow. Okay. And where can people get these podcasts? Uh, we're on iTunes and and then the Rudis website. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if they're wrestling people, they, they know where to find us. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Um, so, last Thursday was fun. That was your first official UFC press conference, correct? Uh, yeah. I mean, they, 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 damn, you know, that was so much fun. <laughs> they should probably consider, like, throwing one of those every week for me. I know. You killed it, my man. No no uh, press conference jitters, if you will. Uh, let's start with before the press conference. A little bit of a run in there between Can you Can you believe and- Marty put this video out? <laughs> I mean, this video makes him look like a dumb dumb, and it was his camera person that put it out. He is like bragging about this. And listen, this is like what I can't stand about fighters. Think about this. Um, listen, we get you're tough. You fight in a cage. I understand that perfectly. But I mean, he has to come up to me. You know, nothing's gonna happen back there, Marty. Why are you getting in my face? You know you're not going to risk your main event shot by punching me in the back hallway. Give me a freaking break. I mean, I, I just I, I couldn't fathom why he's trying to act so tough and exactly what he was trying to do or get out of the situation. Because if it was intimidation, that's freaking laughable. What did you see? Because we only saw it really from like your perspective. I couldn't see him. So it was more like from his back in, in his eyes. Like, Did it feel like he was about to attack you or do something? Well, what was happening No, there? he wasn't, he wasn't going to do nothing. <laughs> he, you know, because listen, that's not who he is. He wants, to act like, he wants to act like he's this crazy, insane, tough guy. But look, I knew him from before. I knew him from before. He's not like he's smart. He's reasonable. And, and for whatever reason, this is the persona that he wants to play is that he's this tough, crazy guy who will fight anyone at any time. And it's it's just silly. It's ridiculous. Um, no, at no point was he ever threatening me. I mean, I didn't budge, right? I sat there because it's like, what are you, what are you gonna do? Like, I offered to fight you. Like you saying, bring the same energy. I, I don't even know what that shenanigans means. It's like, listen, I offered to fight you. I don't know how else you want to settle this. I, I thought that was a fair way to settle it. Um, so yeah, I, I thought it was just all around ridiculous on his part. Does it feel like you're under his skin with the Marty from Nebraska oh. stuff? Yeah, I mean, that's the other thing. It's like, how are you going to let someone who's not even fight? I'm not even signed up to fight you, right? You're fighting Tyron. Um, I uh, I am under your skin so bad uh, that I say one thing. I said, am I sitting next to Marty? And he got all pissed. And then, you know, the funny thing is, like, he's not even like, Marty's not my name. Don't call me Marty. 
You know, it's not like it. I remember, you remember when Muhammad Ali changed his name from Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali, and there was a few boxers who refused to call him uh, Muhammad Ali. They called him Cassius Clay, and so he would say, what's my name? Yeah. And then he beat, beat him up. It's not even like he said, Ben, my name is not Marty. My name is Kamaru. Do not call me Marty. He's not even saying that. Right? So what's he really – he's not even denying that Marty's his name. So I don't even know what he's mad about. What What is this man mad about? I don't know. Yeah. I'm so far under his skin, so far in his head, it ain't even funny. Now, it seemed like before he got there, you were in the same vicinity, almost face-to-face as one Dana White. Yeah. What, what was happening? Did yeah. you guys actually talk? Did you shake yeah. hands? Tell us. Take an awkward small talk. What was the first thing? How did you break the ice? Oh, uh, I, don't even, I don't remember. Just probably, hey, what's up? I, I, I don't recall exactly. Um, I don't exactly recall how it went right now. Okay, was that the first time you, you spoke face-to-face since that meeting a couple of years ago when you were a free agent? Remember I, I said that we spoke for a, a quick minute backstage in, in New York at okay. the show uh, very quickly. And, you know, this this uh, encounter, yeah, this encounter was also pretty brief. Um, I did talk to him after the press conference for a minute also. But, um, yeah, not, not, nothing at length there um, between me and him. What did he say after? I'm I'm actually more curious about that after your your great performance at the press conference. He, did he give you props? He, he he wanted to make sure that he that I don't think he doesn't like me. Oh, and you know it's irrelevant. It's told my, <laughs> it's it's irrelevant, Ariel. Like I don't care if he matches me up with the, the the toughest guys. Like that's what I came for. I came to compete. Give me the toughest guys you got. I'm good to go. Um, and so you know, uh, I don't know. We're never gonna be best friends and. You know, I'm not going to hold him anything against him. But if he doesn't like me, he doesn't like me. And that's fine. I don't really care. Right? It's part. So there's just some people in life we're not going to see eye to eye with and we're not going to like. And and the notion that we all have to like each other and all get along, that's a pretty silly notion. So let me get this straight. Dana White was concerned that you thought he didn't like you, so he wanted to clear the air to let you know that, in fact, he does like you. Is this an actual thing that happened? He said, Ben, he said, ben I, I do not dislike you. There is, <laughs> there's nothing here. <laughs> and, okay, okay, fine. All right, there's not, there's nothing there. I'm good. I'm good to go. By the way, for business, isn't it better if he like keeps up That's the shirt? That's what I thought. Yeah. Well, that was actually the first thing I said here. I said, I said, but wouldn't this be a lot more fun if we just pretended like we didn't like each other? Yes. And what do you say to I that? Think, uh, I think he said no, no. Listen, I don't think he wants to play that game or that <laughs> shit. I don't think, I don't think he wants to go down that that angle. Come on, Dana. Unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, what, what, know, let's tell. Will you go show him how good a ratings Vince and Stone Cold did? Yes, this is like the second coming. It's unbelievable for me, Ben, because you walked away. And let's be I remember talking to you the, the Monday after you walked away after the Shinya Aoki fight, and it was kinda it was just like there. It was a Facebook post and everyone was like, All right, that's it. And now you've turned into like the hottest thing. Everyone can't get enough of you. You're stealing yeah. all the shine of the How did this happen? How did this turnaround happen? Like you were content oh, just being no. on the side and now look at you. Yeah, li- li- life is bizarre, man. Life life's bizarre. I, I have no idea. Hey, you know, there was one good line that Marty had, but it was also so dumb. And, and you know what? I got I got, I got, got photographic evidence. Okay. He said something dumb like, oh, he, well, first he tried to call me young man, and I'm like four years old. This is when he comes at me. Like, yeah. I said, Mar- Marty, you got to sit next to Marty. Look at his skinny jeans. <laughs> Come on. You can't be acting tough when you're in white skinny jeans and a scarf, brah. Get out of here. Um, Wait, can, I, can we just pause there before you finish that story? Okay, Your outfit sure. was just phenomenal. You got the suit, pants, the shirt, and then the flip flops. <laughs> What's going on there? They told me I wanted to wear jeans and a t-shirt. They told me I, this is my first go around, right? <laughs> they told me I couldn't wear jeans and a t-shirt. So I grabbed like what I was wearing at my most recent wedding that I had to be in, and look, I think Dana's making fun of my clothes right now. <laughs> um, and uh, so you know, next time I'm wearing jeans and a t-shirt, yeah. I'm way more comfortable. Like that, but I love wearing flip flops. So that, that's what I'm gonna do. So, anyways, let's get back to Marty's one guy. He calls me young man. I'm like four years older than him. And he says, "It's your first time being on stage. Maybe you can get everyone's autograph." That was kind of funny. <laughs> kind of funny. If it would have been even semi true, but here's the thing about it: is John Jones is younger than me. Cody Garbrandt's younger than me. Marty Usman is younger than me. And I was the star of the wrestling world when all these guys were young pups. And if you remember. There was that one really famous funky shirt I put out. It was very iconic. My friend Marcus Hain made it. It just said, it said funky. It had my afro um, on there looking as magnificent as it could. And I know Marty looked up to me because I found a picture 
of me and him. And he's wearing a funky shirt with an Afro wig. I'm going to put it on my Instagram. Oh. I was, I said, I'm going to break the news here on Ale's show. I'm going to put it on my Instagram later. Break the news that Marty is a funky Ben fanatic. He Wait, you have a picture of Kamaru Usman yes. wearing your T-shirt? And a wig and the fake afro. No, what year is this? Yes. Oh, sh- this is like ten, at least ten years ago. Oh when my. I was, it was like just after college. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna post it. When are you posting it today? Post it. I'll post it right after I get off this interview. This is incredible. Era. This 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 rivalry, if you will, continues to have layers and legs to it. Absolutely. It's amazing. You, Absolutely. It's, it reminds me of Chael Sonnen because Chael did it better than anyone where he would have like four feuds going on at the same time, right? Yeah. So when this fight is over, you can move on to those. You're, you're planting seeds all over the place. But let me just ask you one question about Robbie. You faced yeah. off with the guy. You seemed to like him, seemed to respect him. What was the face-off no, so, like? Yeah, he's so nice. Like, he's so hard not to. We accidentally got on the same bus going over there. <laughs> like, I, like, why do you guys have to make me fight him? He's so nice. He's so likable. Um, he, even, he even, like... He when we I got on the wrong bus, he's like, "Damn, you and Tyron roasted Marty," and he was like, he was laughing about it. Wow. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Rob, Robbie's a beast. He's tough. You know, the one thing I I, I was thinking about Robbie is that uh, he, I remember, and I think it was I was at this fight because it was Tyron was uh fighting, and this was way back, shoot, I want to say 2010, and I remember Robbie got choked out by. Jake Shields. And I remember thinking, damn, Robbie used to be so good. What the hell happened to him? And then obviously, you know, four or five years post that, he went went on that UFC title run. So it's like, I'm going to expect the best version of Robbie. I, you know, I'm not going to expect the down version that that uh, lost to RDA or the one that got choked by Jake Shields. I'm training for the best Robbie. And that's why I think it's so silly when people say, forget about Marty, forget about this. You need to focus just on Robbie Waller and that's it. Like, what do you want me to have a freaking picture of Robbie Lawler and stare him 24 hours a day? That, that's weird. That's bizarre. Obviously, when I'm training, I'm training for Robbie Lawler. I'm training to beat Robbie Lawler. But I'm not going to obsess over the man 24 hours a day. That's just, like, weird. Yeah, that is weird. What about John Jones? Did he say anything to you? I feel like you've talked about John in the past. Yeah. he. Uh, yeah, we made friends. You oh. know, we Obviously, I'm a DC backer, right? That's my guy. I'm going to back him the whole way. And... um and so I've teased John a little bit, but we, you know, we made good after the press conference. You know, he actually wrestled my brother twice, uh, way, you know, way back once in high school and once I think their freshman year of college, he wrestled my brother two times. And so, you know, we kind of ran along the same paths. And so, yeah, he said, uh, you know, he grew up watching me wrestle and, and, uh, nice to meet you. We never officially met in person. So yeah, it was good. You made the case once again for 165, you versus Habib, you said that you would, Ride is back and chant USA. Uh, for those that have been watching you for a while, shades of the Koreshkov fight, that was a fun moment. Dana kind of, you know, put his foot down and said that's not happening. Do you believe him or do you really still think that this is going to happen? No. Do you, do you believe him, Ariel? <laughs> you, you first. Answer the question. Do I believe him that a 165 belt isn't coming? Yeah. Well, if I'm being honest, if he says it's not coming, then I think it is coming. Well, he also said women would never fight in the UFC. That's right. Among, among- <laughs> Many other things he said. So look, when you look at, let's look just from a strictly numbers perspective. Okay. And when when you, if you add up the, and I did the numbers on on the UFC.com, so this is up their their research. Um, if you add up the lightweight division and the welterweight division, those two weight classes, I believe there's 172 competitors. Okay. So if you split that three separate ways, you are still going to have the three biggest divisions in the UFC. You know what I'm saying there? Yeah. And so you'd have roughly 57 competitors per division, which would be the three biggest divisions in the UFC. I mean, you're looking at some of these women's divisions that are uh, they're, they're 12 or less. And so we're talking about three weight classes that are going to have approximately 57 competitors. That's a big weight class. That's a lot of people in there. So, I mean, just the feasibility of it, it, may, it just makes so much sense that I don't see any way that it's not going to happen. What about Khabib saying that you have to show, you know, that – you have to show their levels here. You know, like this isn't yeah. the minor leagues. What about that response? I don't. He said Olympic athletes were different the week before, so I, who knows? Okay. He's all. He's all. He's all over the place. All right. Speaking of which, uh, last week on the program, Ben, we spoke to Darren Till. Oh uh, my goodness. Uh, I, I I don't know if you caught the clip. I just wanted to play it for you I, and our I audience. Saw, I saw a text of what he said. Okay. Here's Darren Till talking about his good friend Ben Askren last week on the show. 
Now, what's happening between you? Can we talk about a Ben Askren? Because I find that your back and forth is very entertaining, I must say. Uh, what is happening? What is the, the, the crux of the issue here? There's no issue. Ben's, <laughs> Ben's a prick. I'm not. And that's it. <laughs> okay. Is this someone that you would like to fight before you move up to 185? Yeah. Richard, yeah, of course. I'm not scared of Ben at all. Ben's. I remember years ago when when I when when I was in Brazil and my wrestling coach Tim. He, yeah, there it is, David. Let you. Just drive on. Just keep driving. I remember when my wrestling coach Tim used to talk about Ben all the time and 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 big him up and so I've known about Ben for years and you know Ben come to the UFC and talking sh and everyone and a lot of people didn't respond. So you know who am I not to respond to Ben and 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 talk some shit. The thing is, Ben doesn't know how to take me because he tries to be all intelligent and I just, I just stalk all and he just, you know, he doesn't know how to react to that. So it is what it is, mate. Ben doesn't know how to take me. He thinks that you're confused by him. Your response? Well, when you're, when, when you're drunk and incoherent, it, why do I even bother? Like, that's a waste of my brain power to try to respond to that. Did you Were you paying attention to his tweets that one night? The man was drunk and incoherent. Obviously, I'm not going to respond to that because it's like when you get to that level of low, you become just as stupid as the person you're arguing with. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to pass on that. Um, You know, the one thing I did, I, he called me, I think he called me a prick or an a-hole or, or something like that. And it's like that – that he's just he's a very immature person he's the kind of person that a beating like me would add some respect to his life and you know i there was an article and this way i said this dude needs and this dude needs to be taught a lesson he like was bragging about the fact that he had a kid in brazil that he didn't see for a year that, that was the type of sacrifice he made it's like that's sad that's irresponsible that's selfish there's so many things that are wrong with that statement and if you do have an illegitimate child and if you do make that mistake which hey man it happens it's life life's tough i get it don't brag about that be embarrassed about that you probably either hide that or or you know apologize for the fact that that is what's happened in your life but he was almost bragging about it it was just really bizarre man like that kid's going to grow up without a father. That's that's freaking sad. You're being selfish. You're being uh, inconsiderate. There's just so many things. So Darren needs to learn some respect. Um, and yes, I'm not going to go back and forth with him when he's being drunk and incoherent and being very immature. In his defense, I don't think he was bragging about the illegitimate child, as you put it. I think he was just saying that, like, right now my only focus is fighting for the belt before the Woodley you, fight. Oh, okay, so uh, if you say not bragging, if you want to say that's my focus, you're bragging about that's what your focus is. Or you're saying this is my focus. Um, man, Errol, that's selfish. When you when you decide to when you decide to have sex, this I'm gonna, this is like a PSA now. I'm like the adult in the room. When you decide to have sex, having a kid is a possible bribe byproduct of that. And if you are mature enough to make the decision to do that, then you have to take responsibility for your actions. Fair enough. And hey, listen, that's the action you chose, Darren. Live, live up to it, man. Don't make, don't make that kid suffer because you made an irresponsible decision. That's a bunch of crap. Fair enough. Um, let me just quickly ask you before we let you go: Is it possible, from from my perspective, it seems like Colby Covington is in the doghouse, and I feel like with <laughs> yeah, all, <he> the, <laughs> all the momentum that you have, I feel like you may leapfrog everyone, and and regard, you know, what, we'll see what happens between the 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 Usman Woodley fight. But if Usman wins, and I know you won't fight Tyron, your friend and 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 former you know teammate at at Mizzou, and I respect that, but it feels like if if Kamara wins, Usman ain't winning. Okay. Ah. Just stop. Okay. So what happens? Yeah. What ha what do you do from there at that point? I'm going to go to London and I'm going to freaking back Tiller Mosvid all into a corner and whoever wins, that's who I'm fighting. Okay. So that's the plan. Beat him yeah. March 2nd and then go to London two weeks later. Correct. Funky Ben Askren just on yeah. fire. So in a matter of moments on Twitter. Now, when you post this on Twitter, because your tweets these days. Well, like, I was, was going to go to Instagram. I'll, go, I'll, okay. I'll post it both places. Can you say, like, I'll, as previously I'll, referenced on the Helwani show, I mean, I need I need the funky rub. You see what I'm saying? How do I say as previously referenced? I mean, you can write that in the in the description. Okay. as pro I'll say as promised. Yes. On... At Ariel, can I? I can probably tag yeah, yeah, you. yeah. You could do that. That's fine. That yep. works. All right. Thank Ariel. you. Yeah, this was fun, Ariel. Th I always. appreciate it. It's always fun, Ben. Great stuff as always. We'll talk to you soon. Good luck in the next few weeks preparing for the fight. Got it. All right, there yep. he is, Funky Ben Askren, with the phenomenal Skype connection in his little uh, studio there. That little whatever that is. It's it's great stuff. UFC 235. It goes down March 2nd in Las Vegas. 
There's the lineup, my friends. John Jones versus Anthony Smith. Tyron Woodley versus Kamara Usman. Robbie Lawler versus Ben Askren. Cody Garbrandt versus Pedro Munoz. And Jeremy Stevens versus Zabit Magomed Sharipov. UFC 234, it is not. This one's stacked. It's amazing. Pre-show and post-show on ESPN+. Plus. Now, this is a 10 p.m. start time as far as the main card is concerned, so the pay-per-views are going to be the same. But like I said, the new era, ESPN Plus cards, ESPN cards, early. Early as far as starting early as far as ending very exciting stuff all right let us move along thank you ben askren now big news last tuesday just moments after the whole nevada athletic commission hearing wrapped up we found out you know what was going to happen to conor mcgregor we found out what was going to happen to habib and his friends we found out about john jones but just moments later artem lobov comes out and tells the world that he is no longer a UFC fighter, that he is now looking to move on with his MMA career, boxing career, kickboxing career. He is a free agent, and he wants a contract in each and every one of those sports. This, I, this, this drew more of a reaction on my social media, Instagram, Twitter, than the Connor slash Habib slash John Jones stuff. I kid you not. The people love Artem. They want to hear from him. He's kind enough to be joining us right now via the magic of Skype. Artem, how are you? Well, good, Thanks for having me. It is a... It is a Sorry, say that again. I said this is my first time on ESPN. Thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute honor and, pl and, and pleasure, Artem. It's great to talk to you as always. So a very busy week for you. When did this all start? I know you told me in the past, before your last fight against Michael Johnson, that you know if you can't get the fight against Zubaira, you want it out. You even talked about getting released before all that went down. When did you start working on you know, this release that you eventually got last week? Uh, you know, to be honest, I've been working on it for quite some time now. Like I did mention to you before, in the summer, you know, I had an opportunity to maybe leave and go elsewhere. But I really wanted a Zubaira fight, so I said, look, I'm going to stay there, take a pre card, whatever it is. I'm going to stay and be there and get this fight and put this uh, right, put it the way it should be done. But now, obviously, after this whole incident took place, October 6th, I had my own fight with Michael Johnson. I, I just knew that he was going to be suspended for a long time. You know, just from talking to the people in the UFC, they 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 were you know I heard that the reaction was not very it was very bad. You know, for that incident on October 6th, and the punishments are going to be pretty severe. So I, I was expecting him, you know, to be suspended, uh, not maybe for a year, maybe a bit shorter. But I still kind of trying to see, you know, what was going to happen. But then once it became obvious that you know. I was not going to be able to get that fight anytime soon. I just thought, well, you know, if, if I can't get that fight and there's bigger paydays awaiting me, then, you know, wh why why not leave? I mean, at the end of the day... Artem, I don't, mean, I, I don't want to interrupt you. I want to hear what you're saying, but unfortunately, I can't hear you. It sounds like you're underwater right now. So we're going to call you on, on your phone, if you don't mind, because you sound great, but unfortunately, I can't hear you. So we're going to, we're going to call you. I want to hear that answer. Uh, we love to see Artem but I want to hear him most importantly. So we're going to reconnect with Artem in a matter of seconds here and call him on his phone. Please stand by. The Skype connection was fine, but I don't know why it sounded like he was underwater there. That was strange. And that's, you know, we got the nice shiny new studio here, as you can see, all the bells and whistles, but Skype is Skype. And as I tried to tell you in the past, when you tried to blame me, this is just the magic of doing things via Skype. Although we can't do FaceTime as well these days. That's a nice little new wrinkle that we have at our disposal. But we'll connect with Artem here in a matter of seconds. Artem Lobov, as I said, now a free agent. His last fight was against Michael Johnson. Uh, leaves with a 13, 15, and one professional record. One no contest as well, of course. A longtime friend, teammate, training partner, sparring partner of one Conor McGregor, a staple over at the SPG Ireland gym. And also the pride of not only Russia, but Ireland as well. And I see him talking online about uh, Amir Khan and Pali Malinaji. See him talking about kickboxing. See him talking about Bellator, who of course has some kind of deal, it seems, with SBG. So a lot of people gunning. When you fight, look, at this point, say what you will about the record, he's a name and people want to fight him. He became one of those guys like Michael Bisping where it seemed like every, every featherweight in the company was calling him out. And so I'm curious who he signs with, and if he does sign with someone, can he do MMA slash boxing slash kickboxing? Is that even possible? You would think that at this point he'd be able to, you know, pick 
whatever he wants to do and sign with whomever he wants. I believe he's on the phone now, standing by. Artem, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Ariel. Okay, that's much better. Sorry about that, Artem. Um, it was good to see All you good. for a second over there, but I, I definitely want to hear what you have to say as well. So let me go back to that initial question because I really didn't hear your answer. Could you tell us like the timeline here, how you got this done? Yeah, so, uh, you know, after Michael Johnson's fight, obviously, you know, I, I kind of started looking when my next fight was going to be. And I already knew just from talking to the UFC that the punishment was going to be pretty severe, you know. I didn't really know how how long the suspension was going to be, but I knew, you know, I wouldn't be able to get that fight as of right now. So I thought, why why not uh, go elsewhere? You know, this is, I mean, obviously UFC has always been the pinnacle of the sport and, and for any fighter, it is a hell of an achievement getting into the UFC. But once you've done that, been there and done that, now it's all about making money. And it just turns out that, you know, there's more money for me to be made elsewhere. And, of course, I'm thankful to the UFC for that. It is the fact that I was a UFC fighter is a big, big, big part of the fact that I'm getting all these offers right now. Okay, so did they even try to convince you? Did they try to keep you? Uh, yeah, they, they they said to me they were offering they were talking about a fight in Russia potentially April, but uh, you know I, I, it wasn't really clear enough when what who and you know it just didn't sound convincing enough and, and like I said the offers were really really good and the only fight that I really 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 want in the UFC is Zubaira and he can't fight now so it was a no-brainer for me um, to you know uh, to test the free agency and see how that goes. And how many fights did you have left on your deal? I had three fights left. Okay. Um, so once you both agreed, okay, there, there's, there's only an opportunity to fight in April. Zubaira is not going to fight for a year. Did they put up much resistance or were they pretty cool about it? Uh, well, I mean, you have to bear in mind that they had just given me a new contract. Ah, I yeah. had just renewed. I had four fights left on my old contract and they gave me a new contract, still left the four fights on it and bumped up my money and, you know, you know, they gave me some other things, uh, beneficial things on it, like the time frame of the contract and all that. But, uh, so, so obviously they weren't willing to give me another, you know, a new contract just as they given me one already. So it was really a matter of, you know, either leave or, or stay with what I have and I was and, uh, you know, I was lucky enough that they allowed me to release because if they wanted to, you know, they could have just kept me there, kept me on the shelf, and and uh, that would not have been nice. So I'm very thankful that they did release me and gave me this opportunity to go and fight elsewhere. Officially, when were you released? Uh, so officially, just when I tweeted, that's when I officially was released. Oh, wow. That's when I finally got my my papers because i didn't want to rush at this time because it has happened to me before in the past where I, I i got a feeling that i was getting released and i contacted a different promotion and asked to fight their champion i said look i'm ready to fight i'm getting released and that was agreed and then it turned out that i wasn't getting released so you know uh, it was not a good situation to be in so this time i had to make sure 100 percent that you know i am in fact getting my release and, and then i announced it do you leave with any regrets not at all, no. I had a great time uh, in the UFC. Um, you know, it, it was incredible. And to be honest, thinking thinking now, I, I think I'm in a perfect spot because I'm, I'm a free agent now, which uh, allows me to make a hell of a lot more money and fight a lot more often. And in the meantime, me and Zubaira is still the biggest fight you could make in Russia right now. So when he is back in a year's time, I mean, who is not to say that there is not an opportunity for me to go back and potentially, you know, fight there again, or LC gets released and me and him put on the fight elsewhere. You know, there is going to be many options for me down the line. So I have no regrets. I never really regret, uh, you know, doing something. I only look forward. I'm moving forward, and I cannot wait to put my hands on everyone, the boxers, the K1 guys, the MMA guys, whoever is there, whoever wants it, come and get it. So I was told that there is an offer on the table for you to fight Zubaira in, in Chechnya for a lot of money. Are you aware of this? Oh, yes, certainly. I, I'm aware of this. This offer was put to me uh, was put to me right before my fight with Michael Johnson, and I have responded to that offer uh, by saying that, uh, you know, no matter where that fight you know takes place, doesn't matter, I'm willing to, to fight uh, Zubaira on 
on whatever notice in any place in the world. And, and, and not only that, but, and I will say this one more time, this fight to me is very important. It's not about money. It's not about anything else. It's about honor. It's about respect. It's about making it right. So I said this in my initial response. Uh, and I will say it again, that from that fight in particular, I will donate every single cent to children's charity. And I will say that again now. Okay. So you, you, every cent that you make from that fight, you, you said that you're going to give to children's charity? Yeah, my full purse, I'm giving it to children's charity. Because the reason I say that, because when it was put to me, you know, there was there was talks of, oh, we'll give you more money if we do this or this. And I just wanted to let it be known that this is not about money to me. I will take that fight in a heartbeat in any organization, in any place on this planet or the moon or anywhere else in the universe. And I don't want to make any money from this. This is, this is about something else. So... We'll see what happens. To the best of your knowledge, do you think that he will fight while under suspension? I have no idea, to be honest. I have no idea. I mean, why, why, I mean if he wants to, why, why doesn't he then leave and, and, and we put it on uh, right now? You know, I, I don't mind that turn of, of events, but I, I don't know. Will he leave? Will he not leave? I have no information on that. Okay, so now that you are a free agent and it's been out there for six days, are you getting a lot of offers? Yeah, uh, to be honest, I, I mean, I, I, if I'm honest, I did expect to get a lot of offers, uh, but, I mean, it, it's been quite overwhelming, if I'm honest. The, the, the numbers have hit six digits pretty quickly, and that's where I'm at at the moment. Uh, I mean, whoever pays more, that's where I'm going to go. You know, once you've been to the UFC as a fighter, you know, you've kind of reached the pinnacle of the sport, so right now, it's all about money to me. I mean, certainly... You know, certain names of promotion, this and that, they do play a certain part, but mainly it's about money now. And are these offers from not only MMA promotions, but MMA kickboxing and or boxing? Yeah, it, it's everywhere. Yeah, there's been, you know, K1, kickboxing, uh, MMA, uh, boxing offers. There's there's a lot of offers on the table, you know, and, and to be honest, ideally I want to sign them all because with me, you don't have to worry about me getting injured or not showing up. I will show up every damn time. If I said that I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there. Even if you line up fights for me every single weekend for the next 10 years, I will be at every single one of them. So so I have a feeling that I could potentially strike uh, numerous contracts, you know, one for boxing, one for K1, and one for MMA, uh, and we can all, you know, uh, come to an agreement, you know, where perhaps if I have something already lined up, I'm not taking a fight in the next certain number of days or prior to that fight or whatever. But, you know, I certainly want to uh, test myself in all those fields. And so, okay, so would it be fair to say, though, I understand that you want, you know, contracts in those three sports, but first things first, get the MMA deal. Is that is that the one that you want to focus on the most? And then kickboxing slash boxing, is that gravy? Uh, to be honest, no. I, I'm putting I'm I'm uh, putting them all up against each other. Do you know what I mean? Wow. And I'm I'm seeing who who was who was what, and uh, you know because it doesn't. I don't have to fight all those sports. I don't have to. I would love to, and I love to fight. You know, I love K1. You know that those are real fights. You know, you show you watch watch their shows. You know, it's 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 proper knocks every time. But they have no. They have no stars. They have nobody really there. People don't really know any names from that sport. So uh, I feel I could cross over nicely. Boxing as well. Look at the state the bo boxing is in right now. There is no one. There is no names. All the all the guys that have a Mayweather Packer, they're all retiring. They're all old, and there is not really that much of the young talent coming up. So I could definitely slot in there as well. Um, and MMA, of course. I mean, I've been I've been making a lot of noise in the MMA world for many years now, and I will continue to do so. So let's see how it goes. I saw on Twitter that you you uh, you sent a message to Amir Khan and Pauli Malinaji. Do you, do you ever hear back from from their representatives? Um, no, I was actually talking today to my management at Gagarin Sports Management, and uh, and uh, they said nothing's been from them just yet. But um, I'm, I'm still hoping, you know, who knows? Now being on your show, I mean, let's be honest. How many people, read, uh, you know, leave the company and, and that becomes news? I mean, here I am on ESPN, on the biggest uh, MMA show in the world, discussing me leaving the UFC and all the opportunities that I have. You know, and, and, and that's, that's what counts, you know. What counts is how many people are watching your fights. And when I fight, everyone watches. Listen, Artem, as you know, you don't need me to tell you this, but, you know, people can say it's tongue-in-cheek. People care about you. And 
what I like about you is that the whole goat thing, you, you take it in stride, you get it. But at the end of the day, you recognize that people actually write about your fights, watch your fights, care about your fights. So you don't really seem to care that people call you the goat and all that and, and seem to take shots at you. As long as they watch, that's all you care about, it seems. Am I right? Absolutely, and, and, and that's what determines. I mean, what, what, what do you call success in our sport? Like, what determines success? I mean, are you successful if, let's say, you're 10-0 and, and no one is watching your fights? Is that success? Trust me, your bank account will say otherwise. So, you know, now that I've been in the sport for so long, I, I know this now more than ever. What success is, how many people are watching your fight. If no one is watching, doesn't matter what else you're achieving. You're not successful. If people are watching your fights, if they care about what you do, you know, then that's success to me. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm one of the most successful fighters in the world. It seems like SBG has a good relationship with Bellator. Have you talked to them yet? I saw you tweet uh, 50 Cent and, and talk about Bellator. Have you talked to that organization yet? Yeah, uh, certainly. They were one of the first you know, to give me an offer. Oh. Um, we have very, very good offer as well, uh, and I'm just um, I'm, I'm right now sort of collecting all the offers. Well, not myself, of course. Like I said, my management, you know, and Gaga in uh, sports, uh, they're just considering all the offers. Um, you know, no offer is too big or too small. So everyone who else is out there, send them all my way, and then we we'll see what happens. How close are you to signing one of your deals? Uh, well, this, this has only been the first couple of days, uh, you know, since I announced my. Uh, departure from the UFC, so a lot of the offers are, you know, uh, at an early stage. I feel that there is a lot more there, even though the offers are already looking pretty good. So we'll see how it goes. You know, I mean, if someone wants to offer me a seven-digit, you know, uh, number right now, I'm I'm happy to sign straight away and let let's call it a day. Forget all the discussions you can have. Uh, you know, the Russian hammer. Uh, making all of your fans scream, whoever uh, uh, organization decides to do that. If not, how, we how... keep going with the... Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. No, no, it's all good. Go ahead, go ahead. How uh, close are we to seven figures at this point? Um, not, 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 that, not, not as close as I would like to be, uh, but, you know, who knows? Uh, I, I was very far from the six digits when I was in the UFC. I left, and here I am already on six digits right away. So, you know, give it another year or so and, and uh, we will be on seven digits I have a feeling does it kind of make you wish you left the UFC earlier if this kind of money was out there waiting for you uh, not at all you know I, I enjoyed fighting in the UFC they have uh, it's you know all things it's a great organization to be part of like let's be honest you know from 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 the very very beginning the moment you get the fight assigned you know you're literally like taken and led all the way i'm very very thankful to all the staff that uh, that work for the ufc they have made each and every single experience of dealing with the ufc great amazing you know they are family and you see it straight away you can see that it is a good kind of company to work for in that sense because you see all the same staff working since my day one in the ufc till now even the company was sold and still the same people remained so you know, it, it's a great, you know, it's a family. UFC is a family, and it was great for me to be part of that. But, you know, I still look forward to this new chapter in my life. Just curious also, Artem, I know you weren't a part of it, but what did you make of Nevada's punishments last week, uh, first and foremost for your friend Conor McGregor getting six months and a $50,000 fine? Did you feel like that was just? Um to be honest, it is what it is now. It's, it's kind of hard to say. I'm, I'm not a judge. I'm not a lawyer. I, I, I don't think, you know, uh, you, if you're not the person starting something, then I don't think you should be punished. I mean, that should be considered self-defense. I mean, well, you, you have to respond. So what do you just stand there and what, do, you know what I mean, just let them, I, I let the whole thing unfold? You know, I mean, it was a chaos in there. So you could understand that, you know, Connor had to react but, you know, it is what it is now. Let's just move forward. Let's just put all this behind us and uh, everyone serve their, their uh, punishments and, and let's settle it in the cage where, where we should have settled it in the first place. And I couldn't agree more, but just curious, the one-year suspension for Zubaira and, and, uh, and Abu Bakr, did you feel like that was too much? Um, all things considered, I mean, it is probably the, the right decision, you know. 
You know, especially given the fact that if, if you're giving Connor six months, well, then you have to give them more. Mm. Given them, I mean, they, they, they just jumped in from outside. They weren't even part of the fight. So you should definitely, you know, give them more. And to be honest, they, they I mean, they should consider the same lucky anyway, because if Connor had press charges, they would have been looking at jail time. So I don't think it's that severe of a punishment for them. It's, I think it's fair. I think it's just. How soon do you want to return? Like in an ideal world, when would you fight again? Honest to God, Rayel, that's that's that was a, probably one of the biggest uh, reasons I, I I I left is that the fact that I absolutely love fighting. I mean, I put all things aside. I actually just love fighting. I want to be fighting all the time, and I used to do that on a regular basis. I remember someone counted uh, how often I used to fight, and on average, I used to fight every 41 days. So for me to go from fighting every month pretty much to to not really fighting at all or fighting once a year that, that was just killing me and, and i have to be realistic as well i'm 32 years old you know I, i'm not getting any younger i'm in my prime right now so i want to be fighting all the time i don't want to be you know sitting on the bench and, and just looking out there so so i hope to fight very soon i hope to fight let's fight next week let's fight the week after whenever show me that contract let's get all this annoying stuff out of the way and let's get to the fun stuff the fights how many more years do you want to do this for? Um, as long as, I, as my body allows me. You know, there's one thing I kind of said to myself. The moment I feel that I'm not improving anymore, that I've taken it deep and I'm, and I'm, I'm on my way down because of age or injuries or whatever the reason might be, I will be honest with myself and I will retire. I will hang them up. But until I'm still, I feel I'm still improving and I'm getting better, uh, I will keep on fighting. And I see the improvements all the time. I mean, look at it. In my last fight, I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with number 10, with the top 10 guy in the world in a weight class above mine, that he was a uh, top 10 guy in a weight class above mine. And, and look, I've done well. It was toe-to-toe, -to -toe. it was even. It was 1-1-1 one, one, one going into the third round, and he just stole it by, by a takedown. So... Of course, I'm excited to see what, what the future holds. I'm excited to see how good I can get. I'm excited to see how people do against me when they cannot take me down. I mean, what is the boxer going to do? Tell me one fight that I lost because of a stand-up. It's always been the takedowns. The guy takes me down and then lays on top of me. That's the only reason I ever lost a fight. So imagine now in boxing when they cannot take me down. Imagine K1 when they cannot take me down. What are they going to do then? I love it. I, I think I'll do really well. In the end, Artem, are you surprised that even, you know, you're on this losing streak, but still it seems like you're more popular than ever? Does that surprise you? Um, you know, but, but that's, that's, again, that's coming back to this. You know, people love to hate, so they find a way to kind of try and get under your skin or your loss or your this and that. But truly, when they're sitting at home watching my fight, they know that this motherfucker brings it every time, and it's a competitive fight every single time. And, and those are the fights that you want to see. You know, nobody wants to see them padded record fights where, where the guy just, you know, falls over in fucking 10 seconds. And to be honest with me, with you, I, I hate when, when fighters do that because I feel like you're cheating the, you're cheating the, 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 the guys that pay your salary. You, you're cheating the fans. You know, they're watching this fake fight. They paid money for it, and, I, and it's not a real fight. You know, they never have to worry about that with me. You know, I, I love my fans. They support me. And, and, and as a thank you, I always give them the best fights that they can possibly see, a real fight. Is there a part of you, Artem, that is happy about being outside of the UFC because now you can no longer hear the, oh, you're just here because of Conor McGregor, you're now on your own path, it has nothing to do with him, and you don't have to hear that anymore? No, I, I didn't mind that at all, and, and I will still say it again. Yes, I was in the UFC. The big part of me being in the UFC was the fact that I, I was uh, was the fact that I'm Conor's friend. Of course, it was. And I'm not denying it. But towards the end, that was not that was not the the reason anymore. And look at look at any other fight. Look at even my last fight. Like I said, I was the co-main event, and you didn't really hear much about the main event. All you heard was people talk about my fight. So, and everyone sees that, you know, at the end of the day, like I said, again, UFC, they only make money if people are watching their fights and people watch my fights. So that means they make money. And if they make money, everyone else makes money. So uh, I am happy to be out of the UFC, but not for the reasons that you mentioned. Ariel. Artem, pleasure as always, my friend. Uh, congrats on a great run, making a lot of noise, getting a lot more fans. I remember when I first met you, 
Uh, several years ago, you were trying to get that fight, I do believe, against Dennis Seaver, and a lot of people here in America didn't know who you were, and you were with uh, your coach, John Kavanaugh, uh, in Las Vegas getting ready for uh, one of Connor's fight. I think it was UFC 178, uh, and you were campaigning very hard to take that fight on a week's notice. Well, now everyone knows who you are around the world. going to be very interesting to see who you sign with, how many deals you get. Please do keep us posted, and thank you, as always, for coming on the show to keep us updated. I absolutely will. Thank you so much for having me on the show, Ariel. It was great being on ESPN for the first time ever. I look forward to being on it many, 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 many more times for many, many, many more years. I'm going to take over this game. I don't give up. I never will. I'm going to keep on fighting. As long as my heart is beating, I ain't quitting. Thank I you look so forward much. to it. Thank you, Artem. There he is, the Russian hammer himself, Artem Lobov, stopping by, giving us an update on his fighting future. Okay, let us move along now. Uh, one of the very best fighters in the UFC is named Islam Makhachev. He is 16-1. and one. He has won his last four fights in a row. Of course, he is a friend and training partner of one, Khabib Nurmagomedov. He is coming off a win over Cajun Johnson back in July, but we have not heard much from him since. His name pops up here and there. But now let's talk to the man for the first time ever on this program. A lot of people excited to hear from Islam. He's now on the Skype machine from Dagestan. Islam, salam alaikum, my brother. How are you? Alaikum salam, brother. I'm good, brother. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you for joining us. This is exciting. I appreciate it. I know it's late over there in, in Dagestan, so thank you very much for doing this. Um, let me ask you first, Islam. I, I, I know your name has popped up, and I know that you were supposed to fight Francisco Trinaldo at UFC 233, but then you heard that they took that fight and moved it. Why haven't you fought, and why don't you have a fight since July of last year? Uh, you know, when you used to give me Trinaldo, they, 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 they don't ask me about this fight about this fight they don't say nothing but i i open my instagram and a lot of people send me a message oh you have fight like this trinaldo but i don't know about this fight nothing nobody say me man not ali no no not my manager not you say nobody call me about this fight nobody ask about this fight okay so as of right now you don't have your next fight correct uh, yes I'm still waiting for next fight. I'm still waiting for next opponent. I'm training every day. I'm, I'm waiting for next fight. I saw your friend Khabib Nurmagomedov last week go on Twitter and essentially say to Kevin Lee, hey, fight my guy Islam. Kevin has been talking a lot about fighting Khabib, but Khabib was maybe trying to stir something up. And then you respond and say, hey, Kevin, I don't hear from you. Did he ever respond? Do you know if there's any interest in making this fight? As you know, Kevin Lee speak too much. He don't he don't do nothing, but he just he just speak. I I I don't know. I I ask him we see about this guy. I don't know. Maybe five five time, ten time. He never give me answer about about fight. I wanna fight with this guy because he say a lot of trash about about Dagestan fighters, about Khabib, about my team. I wanna smash this guy. So doesn't he, matter when, doesn't matter where. You feel like he he's talked too much, that he's crossed the line. Yeah, he, he just he just talk, and that's it. Is the UFC interested in making this fight? To the best of your knowledge, I wanna I wanna I wanna put him in like back, you know, in in prelims. <laughs> you wanna send him back to the prelims? Yes. So, is the UFC interested in making this fight? I don't know. Maybe if we if we if we fight in Russia, mm. everybody interesting. In Russia, I know in Russia, my my like my team, my fans, everybody uh, waiting for this fight because he say a lot of trash about Russian fighters. I understand the UFC is going to Russia, right? In uh, in April, I believe. Are you going to be on that card? I don't know. I'm. I know he say he wanna be, he wanna be in Russia in April. That doesn't matter for me. I I'm ready now. In March, in February, in April doesn't. If if they give me Kevin Lee, I agree everywhere. <laughs> no matter when, no matter where. Is it a little frustrating that your yeah. last fight was in July, and here we are in February, and you still don't know when you're gonna fight again? Uh, you know, uh, when when Habib's fight with uh, McGregor, I'm 
I, 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 I'm in good shape this time. I, I, I tell my manager Ali, uh, I want to fight in October, the, uh, October, the November or December. You see, don't give me. And I need rest after after this like big training camp. I need rest of like couple months. And I tell him now I'm I want to fight just in February or March. And so it does seem um, last night. I, I I guess I missed it, but it does seem like he did respond. He didn't respond to you. He responded to Habib saying about you, the man can't speak for himself, huh? I heard he's already too hurt. Did you see this message? And what is he referring to about you being hurt? Yeah, I see this message, but I hope, I hope he signed contract right with me. I hope. Oh yeah, because then I see that you did respond to him. March 30th, Philadelphia. The train is moving here. You're making things happen, Islam. Yeah, it doesn't matter where. Doesn't matter. <laughs> um, okay, and right now you are, you are in Dagestan, right? everywhere yes i'm dagestan now what, what is life like for you guys after what habib did to connor i feel like all of you have gotten a lot more famous over there is it i know it's hard for habib to go outside and he has a lot of people you know that want to talk to him and yeah. give him attention is it the same for you as well not same but after 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 habib uh, after after last fight like you know every everything changed like a lot of people know in you know in Dagestan you see very famous. Mm. Is it is it hard in to Russia, be around him? A lot of people coming up to him. It's hard to have privacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very hard for Habib. Has he changed though, or is he still humble? Is he still the same old Habib, or has yeah, he, he is his head getting humble. a little big? He stay humble now. He's still <laughs> he's still training. He stay humble. He training every day. He's in Dagestan uh, now as well? He, yeah, he's in Dagestan now. What did you think of the Nevada Athletic Commission, the, the punishments that they gave to your teammates, Zubaira and Abu Bakr? What did you think of the one-year suspension, $50,000? Uh, I don't agree with this decision because because the Nevada give, give Zubair and Abu Bakr one year. This is like, I don't understand how. They, they don't do nothing. But they, you know, when Abu Bakr go inside the cage, my uh, corner punch him first. Hmm. Like Abu Bakr just defense. Where where were you himself. where were you during all this? Because I think initially some people thought that you were that guy in the red in the red shirt that jumped over, but that wasn't you. Were you even there? Yeah I'm uh I'm I'm not jump oh, inside there you are. but I'm uh, I'm not just jump uh, jump inside but I'm I'm stay with, close with Cage. When when Habib punch this, this guy Dino Dennis, yeah, I stay with him. Okay, you were you were a part of Habib's corner. Yeah. Okay. Did you get hurt? Did anyone punch you in that in all that? No, nobody punched me. But one guy, I don't know his name. He working in UFC. He like cage me like like just. Protect me. That's it. Okay. Um, Nobody punch me. That's good. Uh, and and Habib getting nine months and five hundred thousand dollar fine. What did you think of that? This is crazy. I don't know how they give him like this, like this. Uh, because when when McGregor attacks Bass, they give him. I don't know how much they give him. Nothing. Now, well, he went. He went to jail, okay. but he he couldn't get fined anything because he wasn't a licensed fighter yeah. in New York. They don't pay nothing, but now this is not small money. I think this is big money. And I don't know how they they give him like this decision. Do you think it's Do you think it's fair that Habib got nine months, five hundred thousand, and he got six months, fifty thousand? No, I don't agree with this decision. Uh, Ali via Habib said that uh, Habib is not going to fight for a year. He's going to sit out as long as Zubaira and Abu Bakr can't fight. Is that what you hear as well? Yes, I, I think if Habib, I think uh, when when uh, when Zubair and Abu Bakr uh, finish finish uh, this this decision disqualification in October, maybe Habib fight in Zubair same 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 uh, 
same event. Right. No, he don't. He. I know he. He still. He's still waiting for uh, disqualification from Zubair and Abu Bakr. Were you worried that that you would get punished as well, initially? Um, I, I, I don't. I don't like think about this because because with him. If if they give him disqualification, if they give me disqualification, doesn't I don't I don't think about this. They don't give me nothing. Now I'm ready for next fight. Okay, um, it must be unbelievable for you guys to see how popular the sport has 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 gotten in in Dagestan and Russia. Like to see some of that footage of how the the fans react there to you guys. And even when I understand when you called out Kevin Lee last week. Everyone went on his Instagram and like spammed it and said Islam time and all that stuff. Your your fans are very they're very passionate. I don't know if you know this, but you have a very passionate following, you Dagestani fighters. Yeah, in in Dagestan, in Russia, I have I have a big big fans team. Like I know I know my my team, my fans. Everybody want to want to see my fight with Kevin Lee. Have you talked to Khabib yet about what you guys will do? Like I said, you're 16 and one. You've won four in a row, and you're getting close. You know, if you fight a guy like Kevin Lee, like you're now in that discussion where we're talking about maybe top five. What happens? He's still the champion. It doesn't look like he's going to lose anytime soon. And you're number one contender. What are you guys going to do then? I don't know. We don't talk about this. But Khabib say if they if they if you see give you fight match, I I I are coming with you. Uh, in in USA for training camp, stay with you one month. But we training together here in Dagestan every day. We don't we don't we don't think about uh, that title fight with Habib. You would never fight him, right? I'm in fight with him oh, every day in, <laughs> in the in the my gym. But not for money, not at a UFC event. No, never. Brothers, no, no, no. brothers don't fight, right? Yes, yes. But do. I think you say you, you know, USA people now understand this, but we're not like brothers. We like real brothers, you know. Right, but one gym that understands that is the American Kickboxing Academy because they've been in that position in the past with John Fitch and Josh Koscheck, Daniel Cormier, Cain Velasquez. They don't agree yeah. with that, so you're a perfect fit over there. Yeah, I like this guy. They, they this guy understands. What I mean. So will you go if you get a fight in March? Will you go back to San Jose for that camp? Yeah, of course I'm training. I think four weeks and I'm, I'm I will be training in in AKA. I was just at AKA last week and they showed me where all all you 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 fighters stay when you come from Dagestan. You all stay together in like a small hotel. And and Javier Mendez told me that he's told Khabib like you guys can get a mansion, you can get a big house, but he said no, we have to stay humble, we all have to stay together. Why do you why do you do that? Why not have a, a, a more spacious place, you know, fancy place, things like that? Why why not now that you guys are so famous and, and there's so many of you, why not try to go somewhere nicer when you're there? Uh, you know, we're looking for a big house with close with AKA, but we don't we don't uh, we know we have like stay America hotel with this this hotel very close in in with the AKA like five four minutes. This is easy for us. Like we we go we went to tra we will go to training um, before like five minutes. We we like, we we think about time. You know, mm -hmm. we rent big house like. 25, 25 minutes we need to go before training and come back 25 minutes. But like, this, is, this is big time. You know? If you can't get Kevin Lee, is there anyone else that interests you? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I want to fight with Kevin Lee, but the, if they don't give me, I'm, I'm fight with every. It doesn't matter who. Uh, we we saw how personal. I want to fight three three more three time in. in uh, I want to fight like three time in, in a year. In two thousand nineteen. Yeah. Uh, we saw how personal it got between Connor and Khabib leading up to that fight, and 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 Kevin has talked about you know the 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 Russians and Dagestani's. 
is it possible that that could get, you know, the buildup, if that fight happens, that it could be personal like that? Is this something that you're worried about? Uh, no, I think Kevin Lee understand. This is not joke. This trash talk, this is not joke from uh, Dagestan people. This is real. If you say like something uh, about about my 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 country, my my team, when I when I see him, I smash him. Doesn't matter where. All right. Inside, well... outside, doesn't matter. Now I, I think everybody understands this. And and just to be clear, has your management have they talked to the UFC about this fight? Do you know if the UFC is actually interested in it? Mm, I don't know. Uh, they this guy gave me answer just today. I don't know. I'm gonna call my manager and ask about this. Okay. Well, hopefully we're gonna talk I to hope. him very shortly. So go go ahead. Sorry. I hope. I hope. I'll talk with you see about this fight. All right. We will ask him as well. Islam, it's nice to have you on the show for the first time. Keep up the great work. Continued yeah. success to you and the team. Salam alaikum, my brother. We'll see you soon. Good luck thank getting you, that fight. You, I hope you understand, guys, my English. Very Thanks good. So much. Yeah. Very good. Actually, thank I was you. told that you're the funniest guy on the whole team, that you're funnier than Khabib, that you have a great sense of humor. So uh -huh. over time, we will get to experience that as well, I hope. I was in USA four months four months ago, and a little bit uh, forget English. I need to practice. It's practice. okay. Great job, first time. Thank you, Islam. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. All right, there he is, Islam Makhachev, climbing up the ranks at 155 pounds, wins over Chris Wade, Nick Lentz, Gleison Tebow, Cajun Johnson. Last two finishes in the first round. Knocked out Gleison Tebow in just 57 seconds, then uh, beat Cajun Johnson in what ended up being Cajun Johnson's last UFC fight back in July in Calgary, 4 minutes and 43 seconds. Has one loss on his record. That was a knockout to Adriano Martins, a somewhat shocking knockout. It happened in just a minute and 46 seconds in the first round. That's the only blemish on his record. That was in his second UFC fight. Other than that, absolutely perfect. Young, just 27 years young, from Dagestan, a mini Khabib, if you will, and on the same path, other than that one blemish, uh, appears to be moving in the same direction as one Khabib Nurmagomedov. He wants Kevin Lee. I missed the fact that Kevin had actually responded, not to him, that's why I think I missed it, um, but to Khabib. And it seems like he is pushing for a fight. Islam is March 30th. In Philadelphia, that's the ESPN card. You'll recall uh, Kevin was on the show a few months back talking about walking around at UFC 229 with the bulletproof vest and the Irish uh, fans were there and then the Russian fans were there and everyone was kind of coming at him but no one actually did anything. So if he wants a fight, and Kevin's one of those guys who somewhat like Ben Askren has a lot of seeds planted all over the place um, as far as feuds, ongoing feuds, if you will, uh, he's he's got an opportunity here with Islam Makhachev. That would be a lot of fun. And then perhaps if he gets by Islam, then he could get the fight that he's really been talking about for three years. I mean, if you go back, there was a time when no one was talking about Khabib and Kevin Lee was talking about wanting to fight Khabib. This is not a new phenomenon just because Khabib is champion. I, my heart just stopped, I must say. I'm sorry for going off topic here, but... My son's teacher just sent me an email with the word surgery in the subject, but it's like it's like a, a thing that they did. You can't put surgery in a, in a subject line from a teacher. I, I swear my heart just stopped on the air right here. The word surgery was in the subject line of this email, and then I just see it's like some, you know, I mean, really? You can't do that. As you will soon hear from your child that we perform surgery to, I mean, what? What is that? What is going on? Otherwise, a great school, but literally, I just felt my heart stop there for a second. I actually felt it stop. It just says surgery, and it's not even like capital S surgery. It's under, it's like all undercase, lowercase. Surgery, really? Questionable, a little bit. I hope they don't listen to the show. I mean, otherwise, very nice people, but maybe next time you don't put the word surgery in the subject line. 
maybe that's not the best thing to put in the middle of the day. Like maybe just say like, hey, we've got a fun little project that we're doing. Maybe something like that. Jeez. We're tracking down Ali Abdelaziz and uh, my, his team is telling me that he's on and, and waiting to come on. Corporate Jake getting a little snippy with me back there. I mean, really raising his voice, if I'm being honest. Ali Abdelaziz, the uh, manager for one Islam Makhachev, manager to the stars. One of the most polarizing, controversial figures in this game, but no doubt about it, uh, has at this point probably the most robust client roster as far as UFC fighters are concerned. Names that we want to talk to him about. Henry Cejudo, Marlon Moraes, Frankie Edgar, Khabib Nurmagomedov, Ray Borg, Khabib Nurmagomedov. Again, Kamara Usman, Khabib Nurmagomedov, Kelvin Gaslam, Khabib Nurmagomedov. Rumble Johnson, who showed up at the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship uh, event on Saturday following the UFC event. Everyone got their panties in a bunch thinking that he had actually signed, but uh, he's not actually fighting. He's like a, an ambassador of sorts, like one of those guys who's going to do PR for them. So everyone just calm down. Fabrizio Verdum, who was on the show last week asking for his release. Uh, Nick Newell, Sajara Eubanks. The list goes on and on and on. Kelvin fighting for the belt this week. Marlon Moraes just fought in the main event. Always a lot to talk about uh, with Ali, the head man over at Dominance MMA. So we'll talk to him in a matter of moments. Hopefully afterwards, we'll talk to Leon Edwards, who was a part of that uh, press conference in England last week. There's actually another press conference in England this week. Uh, MVP Paul Daly. That fight is coming up uh, very soon in less than two weeks here in Connecticut at the Mohegan Sun. The most talked about, uh, the, the most anticipated UK MMA fight ever. Paul Daly, another one of his guys, by the way, uh, Ali's guys. And it's happening at Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut. Why? I still don't quite understand, but it's actually happening. It's actually uh, a, a, a full weekend of Bellator MMA at Mohegan Sun. There's Two events back-to-back, -back, Friday, Saturday, and then there's the UFC on ESPN card Sunday. So it's a really busy weekend coming up in uh, two weeks. This weekend, of course, it's UFC 234, Kelvin Gaslam versus Robert Whitaker, and then it's uh, in the co-main event, the people's main event, Israel Adesanya versus... Anderson Silva. We'll talk to Israel Adesanya in the third hour. We'll also talk to Robert Whitaker. The rest of the card, if I'm being honest, is a little thin, but I want to remind you that we're back on the radio, on terrestrial radio, on Saturdays. So we're back for more. We did our maiden voyage uh, before the first card in Brooklyn. That was last month, and we're back on ESPN Radio. Helwani Show on the radio, so we're on television tomorrow, midnight, Eastern Time, 9 p.m. Pacific on ESPN News. Also, the show is replayed 1 a.m. Eastern Time, 10 p.m. Pacific on ESPN2, back-to-back. Multiple opportunities to watch this show. That's how popular this movement is. And we've got that, and then it's, I think it's going to replay later. But then we've also got the radio show on Saturday from 3 p.m. Eastern Time to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. You can listen to it on your radio, satellite radio. You can also listen online. We're getting two and a half hours, so we've gone from an hour to two and a half hours. How great is that? It's incredible. And also, for those that watch the show on Monday, if you think that the TV show is just a one-hour condensed version of... The Monday show. It's not. We have new segments like Turn Back the Clock. Fun one last week. We got a really fun one this week where we kind of take something that's happening today and turn back the clock, if you will, and compare it to something that happened in the past. And also Three Stars where we highlight three individuals who had a big week outside of the arena. That's coming up on the TV show tomorrow. But for now, let us go to the Skype machine, I do believe, and say hello to our next guest. This man asked me to come on the show. He says that he's got a lot on his mind. And here he is with his sunglasses, late, 12 minutes late. I've been uh, wasting all this time. And, uh, and now he's just fashionably late. There he is, Ali Abdelaziz, manager to the stars. Ali, how are you? I don't, I don't see you. I'm supposed to see you or no? Well, you see yourself right now, right? Yes. Yeah, well, that's how the magic of TV works. There we go. Hello, Ali. How are you? What's up, Ali? How are you? Uh, your face is a little cut off there. Do you, do you mind just framing the shot a little bit? Okay. Just move it up a little bit there. Yeah, move it up. There we go. Okay, there it is. Perfect. You did great. Oh, you have to hold it. Is that annoying? 
No, no, I'm going to have somebody. Yeah. yeah. Have Where's one of your many assistants? They can hold it for you. You've got like eight and now. My brother. My yes, brothers. your brother. Sorry, Mike. Well, it's nice to talk to you, Ali, because last week I couldn't help but notice on Twitter you called me a bum. You know, you, you retweeted my post. So it's nice that you're on the show. I'm happy to talk to you. Sometimes you, I'm not saying you're a bum. Sometimes you're news bums. <laughs> you see some bum shit. Yeah. Well, it's good. Is it very sunny in your house? Why are you wearing sunglasses? I don't feel good. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. So, so you didn't feel good, or you don't feel good. Marlon didn't feel good last week. Let's talk about Marlon. What a performance! He was sick. He won, but now there's a whole confusion, right? There's a whole confusion at 135 because you also have your guy Henry talking about TJ. What is going to happen? We all know that you run the UFC, so tell us what is going to happen, Ali. Yeah, I run the UFC. I run BFL, and I'm working on Bellator too. I'm gonna be running this. <laughs> okay, great. So, what's going to happen? Tell us. Listen, at the end of the day, um, you know, one thing I know, TJ De La Shaw is fucked. You know, TJ, TJ De La Shaw has some problem because uh, 10 times out of 10, Henry's going to knock him out. Uh, 10 times out of 10, Marlon will knock him out. Uh, the whole thing is, uh, TJ De La Shaw is just that. Uh, his career just got derailed, you know. Um, and at the end of the day, uh, Marlon and Henry, they, they want to be a world champion since they burst or they born or they start training, right? Um, I'm just there for both of them to give them the best opportunity to become the world champion and make uh, make the best out of it, make the most money, you know, take care of their families, their responsibilities. Uh, but, you know, it's a very interesting situation because now, my opinion, Henry is the UFC bantamweight champion. He's the flyweight champion because you can never be a champion coming up a lot. And my opinion, uh, I think Cody should rematch, uh, what's his name, uh, TJ. They should strip him from the title. And they have Henry and, uh, and Marlon fight each other for the pentamweight title, you know? Or, but I know this is not reality. Yeah. I know TJ won it. Uh, Dana won it. You know, I, I, I talked to him a couple of times and Henry won it. But at the end of the day, Marlon Marais, his next fight is have to be a title. You know, it's a... Uh, you know, he, he's given hair cut to the whole pantomime division. You know, he gave uh, a Sansawa haircut. He gave Cody, uh, what's his name, um, Jimmy Rivera haircut. He gave <laughs> Aljamain Star a haircut. You know, he, he's become the best barber in the UFC. You know, uh, and just, it's very hard to deny him uh, a title shot at this point of his career. And it makes no sense. But he's, he, you know, Marlon Moraes is a good place. He have one fight left on his contract. He's on a great run. Uh, and listen, I think the the, the weight division right now is I mean, it's great. You know, you got Cody's coming back. You got you got Henry's right there. You got Marlon right there. It's it's a it's it's a good place to be Marlon. It's a good place to be Henry. And uh, just uh, you know, and I want and listen. At the end of the day, I understand the business I run. When I work with so many great fighters, I understand that we have to fight one day, right? Right. And at the end of the day, everybody know. When they fight, I'm going to be home. Then Egg is going to be running the show. And I'm just going to watch it from TV. But, you know, this is day one. This is not about me. It's about, like I said, I'm a master. Serve many. They are my masters. And every individual have a dream. Marlon have a dream. Henry have a dream. Cody have a dream. Uh, they all have dreams. And at the end of the day, they're going to fight for their dream. And if they have to fight each other, they can fight. No problem. What do you think is going to happen with the flyweight division? Are they getting rid of it? They, they listen to me. Like people are going to say they're going to get rid of it. If they got rid of it, they would tell Henry, you know what? Goodbye. You're not the champ anymore. They tried to bring TJ down because they thought TJ have a shot, right? And listen, if, if somebody going to say, oh, the UFC want Henry to lose, at the end of the day, the UFC can whatever they want. I don't know what they want, right? But it's your job to win. It's your job to lose, but uh, you control your own destiny, you know. And I think Henry controls his own destiny, and he went out there and knocked out TJ three times. He knocked him out, twenty-five unanswered punches. And this guy said, "I want a rematch." My opinion, he doesn't deserve a rematch. This is my opinion, and I think he he, he talked his entitled, you know. TJ De La Shaw, like people. The, the, the greatest pentam weight of all the time is Dominic Cruz. It's not TJ Delashaw. That's it. He beat Cody two times. He caught Cody with a punch. Cody was beating him. And he got caught with a punch. But he won. 
but he's not the greatest bantamweight of all the time. You know, I think Dominic Cruz is. But what are you going to do with Marlon then? If you're saying so, who Marlon, knows, how is he? What's he going to do? It's a mess. Marlon's going to sit pretty. Okay. And he's going to get a new contract, and he's going to and, and he's going to fight for the title. Man. That's, that's what Marlon's going to do. All right. Um, okay. Let me talk to you about last week. Your clients, Khabib Nurmagomedov, Zubaira, Abu Bakr, they got their suspensions. Connor got his suspension as well. Khabib gets nine months if he wants, six months if he films his PSA and 500,000, and then Abu Bakr and Zubaira get a year and 25,000. Do you feel like Nevada was fair? Do you feel like they got it right? Like I'm a little, I'm a little bit torn about this because I really like Bob Bennett. You know, the guy was... Uh, United States, but I don't have a lot of respect for him and admire him, but I know Bob, he doesn't make this kind of decision, he make recommendations. You know, listen, at the end of the day, I'm not going to see him, bitch. It is what it is. You know, we have to move forward. But, you know, just Khabib is very simple. You know, he said he's not fighting Nevada anymore. And, and we, you know Habib as much as I do. And it's very hard to change his mind. I think it was very, very harsh for Zubaira and Abu Bakr to get a year. Listen, I'm good with Khabib's nine months. It is what it is. You have to make an example. It's fine. But how are you gonna give how are you gonna give Habib five hundred thousand and you give this little Irish prostitute fifty thousand? You know, this little this little Irish clown, you know? And the guy is not his first offense in Nevada. The second he, he was through uh, like a Red Bull and the fan and, and Nick Diaz in his team, you know. The guy, he jumped on the case at least two, three times. Like, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, I don't know, man. I really don't give a shit. Uh, but at the end of the day, Khabib make up his mind. I'm going to support him 100%. Nevada need to do what they need to do. We have to do what they have to do. We already, well, like I said, we already pay 750000 a check between Nevada and the lawyer. So Khabib paid Dubai and paid Abu Bakr too. These guys, they make 25 and 25. How are we going to give him a penalty at $25,000, right? And it's crazy because they charge Habib paying 10 times more than Connor. And it's, it's ridiculous. But at the end of the day, I, I want to, I truly want to thank Hunter Campbell from the UFC because without him, this deal will not be done. I want to, uh, James, the lawyer, personally, um, you know, the, the UFC, the Nevada, Listen, it was a lot of work, it was a lot of drama. Listen, the mayor was there, and I think that was the biggest problem. And one of the biggest sport events, fight event in the world, and it was huge. And a lot of people were watching him. Nevada, uh, but I think Nevada, you know, they, they didn't treat Habib fairly. They didn't treat Abu Bakr fairly. No, they treat Habib fairly, but they didn't treat Abu Bakr or Zubair fairly. Right. This is my opinion. So you, you told you know, me that you told me that he's going to sit out for a year while his friends are suspended, and that he's going to pay their fine, and he's hoping to return Madison Square Garden in November. If that remains to be true, who do you think he'll fight? It has listen, to be Tony Ferguson, right? I, I want something different, right? What do you want? What I want. And listen, what does he want? Line him up. Line him up. Doesn't matter. Tony, uh, uh, like uh, Al again, Dustin, you know. Listen, the UFC, what they do right now, they they run a promotion, right? They understand they need to get Connor back credibility. They gotta match him up with layup, like cowboy, like, like somebody they know Connor have a chance to beat. But I don't think cowboy it's an easy fight, you know. But uh, uh, but at the end of the day, and in the process, maybe Habib can lose. You know what I'm saying? And after that, Conor fight again for the title. Because, let's be real. The, you, this is the biggest rematch in the UFC history, right? Right. But in the long run, it's not. The UFC will lose money because if Conor gets smashed again, because he will get smashed again, him and his own entire punk team, they will get all smashed. You know, inside the cage, outside the cage, in the parking lot, in the shower, you know, don't drop the soap, baby. Stop. You know, that, wrong. That, that, they just, uh, they will not, they cannot defeat us. But what about Tony? Arena. It has huh? to be Tony. 
listen, listen. Tony's a is a 36 years old twig. This is what he is, a skinny twig. He get dropped every fight. The guy is a mental magic. The guy blocked me one day off, one day on. He blocked me. He's a confused individual, right? But Tony, I think one of it will be one of Habib's. He, Khabib fought Barboza, one of the best strikers. They stuck the they stuck the head far. Ala Quinta. We just saw what Al Quinta did to Khabib Lee, right? And people said, oh, Khabib be the real estate guy. Huh? The real estate guy with an ass, right? But now I think uh, you know, guys, get in order. Khabib is one of the greatest pound for pound fighters ever ever fought. His record show, his 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 number show, everything. Tony's Tony's uh, Tony's whatever you can say. Tony fought Pettis. Pettis haven't fought fights since 1999, and Pettis almost beat him. You know, people cannot tell me Tony is the guy. But if you think he's the guy, line him up. I think Khabib will be Tony, Poirier, and Al again same fucking night. All of them. I really believe so. We beat him all. Doesn't matter. You can, this man cannot be defeated. Because only God can defeat him. But this man cannot be defeated. That's it. Last, That's week, what I last week we saw another one of your clients, Kamar Usman, another one getting a title shot. It seems like Ben Askren is under his skin. Is he focused on Tyron Woodley here? What's going on there? We saw the footage of them confronting each other where he confronted him. What's happening there? Let me explain to you. Let me explain to you. I was poisoned in bed. I was dying, right? Poisoned? What do you I, mean poison? I, yeah, somebody tried to kill me. Somebody tried to kill you. Yeah, in New York. Who? Somebody, somebody tried to poison me. I was Le in the hospital. Legit? Did some, you think someone yeah. poisoned what? Your food? Your drink? I don't know. I was poisoned. I was in the hospital two times. What kind of poison? Doesn't matter. I don't want to get in detail. But somebody get to tell that tried to poison me. Someone okay. is trying to kill you. Yeah, somebody tried to kill me. Yes. How do you feel about that? Doesn't matter. Like I said, if you're my friend, I'm gonna love you more. And if you're not my friend, don't come around me because I'm a lash on you. You don't think it's one of your friends that did this? No, I don't think it's my friend. But listen, it is what it is. It happened. Whoa. I'm alive. You know, listen, people been trying to kill me for years, but I'm still alive. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Are you okay now? Yeah. The reason why, because the new slogan for 2019, respect the game. I respect the game. That's right. <laughs> I don't think I'm bigger than the game. Okay. But so, yes. You were saying Kamar Usman. My all oh my guys? Yeah. The, the Marlin, the Cody, the Henry, the, the Frankie Edgar, the Osmar, these guys, they run the game. I don't run the game. They run the game. In 2019, the haters would triple. So what's happening with Usman and Askren? Is that the next fight? Regardless? Listen, at the end of the day, I was being told Kobe Covington is not even going to get a title shot next. You know, I was dying in bed, but I know Osman have bad intention towards Askren. You know, listen, Ben Askren is a nice guy. But, you know, he's a, he's funny, you know. And sometimes, you know, uh, I know Osman. Osman probably one of my closest friends uh, on a roster, on my roster. And Osman doesn't play. He doesn't play around. You know, you can't play as an African. You cannot play with an African man. Yeah. You understand? Because understand. He, he, if Dana was not there, and Hunter and Brian, the security, Ben Askren will have a, a print inside his head through the wall. I'm telling you, he was going to do it. And uh, and I was not there. But I got there because I told Osman, please. He said, I'm going to whoop him. Doesn't matter. But I'm glad Dana was right there. Everybody was right there. Because, you know, listen, Ben Askren, you know, he wants to be an entertainer, right? But at the end of the day, like sometimes you put too much smoke out that you can't inhale it. And that's what he did, you know. And even I saw him outside, and he was by himself, and Osman was again. And I started a conversation with him. I said, Ben, you need a sub. Because I you know I felt bad because, you know, nobody going to back him up. You know, and Osman, man, Osman is a, he's a nasty, nasty guy. Man. He's a nice, nice guy. But he's a nasty, nasty guy. Like, like he almost looked on Kobe Covington, and security stopped him. I let him, I let him do it. But you cannot talk shit to Osman 
and he see you, he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna do something. Just be careful how you talk to the Nigerian nightmare. Uh, you know, because African men don't play around like that. It's different culture, different you know people come from, and uh, I'm glad uh, Ben Askren and his hit did not go through the wall because he was gonna do it. I know he's gonna do it. Okay, let me ask you about some of your other clients here, um, because you, you've got a lot that I want to ask you about. Frankie Edgar, is he going to fight for the belt next? Is he fighting Max Holloway as far as you're concerned? Frankie Edgar fighting Max Holloway. Uh, everybody owe Frankie Edgar. The whole entire sport owe Frankie Edgar. You know, listen to me. And show more respect than Frankie. You know, and, and you know, that might not have problems, you know, in the past, but they give this guy respect. And the whole thing is, Frankie Edgar respect. And uh, this is a relationship way before me, you know. And uh, and they understand Frankie, give up his title shot for Ortega. He take a L, he come back, beat cup, you know. Uh, you see my car who got, you know, smashed by Aldo. And they show you how good Jose Aldo is, you know. But I, I, I think... Super fight. I would like to see in the future. Oh. I would like to see Jose Aldo fight Marlon Mar 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 as oh. a fan. Yeah, yeah. That'd be fun. I, I would like to see that. You know, I got a lot of respect for Jose Aldo, but we see what Jose Aldo uh, has done. You know, uh, and now you have clear cut number one contender. You know, Khabib is not fighting Max. Max has his opportunity already with Khabib. He didn't make weight. He, we moved on, right? Uh, I don't think Tony deserves to fight Khabib, but. This How does he not deserve fight. to fight Khabib? What are you talking about? Bro, he doesn't, man. He's, he's, he sucked. Look at his winning streak. Brother, it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter where his streak. Like. But he, Khabib will fight him. But at the end of the day, I, uh, I, think, I think Tony Ferguson is like a white sheep. He has no spices to it, no character to it. He got a cheap ass sunglasses on. That's what, what do you represent? He, he represent nothing. Tony Did... Ferguson represent nothing, man. You know, this guy Connor, he represent, he represents something. He represents the biggest piece of shit scumbag in the whole planet, right? That's who he is. What's Tony present? He's like a blank piece of paper. You gonna? It's boring, you know. But you know, he's a good fighter. But I think he's over. He's over his time. His time has passed. He's old. He's slow. And that's it. Uh is Verdum getting released? He was on the show last week. He wants to be released. No, is he getting released? I'm, I'm going to tell, I'm I'm tell you something like that. Yeah. Whoever fuck with Verdum, an athletic commission, the UFC, whatever, is fucking with me personally. Leave this fucking man alone. Leave Verdum alone. And I'm, I'm telling you, I will spend every dime I have for Verdum. I don't give a shit if I'm broke living in the street. You know, because this guy is, a, is an absolute legend. He did a lot of stuff in the sport. Just leave the guy alone. Like the guy is almost going to be 42. You know, Usada, we know how I feel about Usada. Usada's, is, 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 uh, Usada's headquarters is Las Vegas. That's what I think, you know. Uh, you know, uh, you know uh, Usada, Usada's a whole bunch of insecure men. Oh. Uh, they, they're afraid. They, they, you know, and that, that's it, man. Usada, I don't give a shit about Usada because I think Usada's great. great. Uh, Ali, let me ask you. As you know, we always talk about this thing. You made the joke early on about how, you know, you run the UFC, you run PFL, you're soon going to be running Bellator. Bro, and you know what? You know what? Honest area. Yeah. You know, you, you know what's so funny? Yeah. You never fucking ask me. Why you never ask me? You have been 10, 10 years in the game. The only guy ever left is Rafael Busanios. I managed over 30 world champions. Nobody ever leave. I get more support than anybody. Why you never ask me? This? I feel like we've talked Why about always, this. Why you always ask me about some punk ass motherfucker on on, 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 on the internet? What? Guess what? what when you, you tweeted yesterday, when you tweeted yesterday about the show, the yeah. whole comment section is about me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You okay. know, but what? Ali, the I, the theory seems to be that now that because you testified on behalf of the UFC about not making the pays the payments public that this is why they give you all these title shots Kelvin Gaslam Kamara Usman is that true did they say to you you testify on our behalf we'll give you all these title shots that's what everyone seems to be saying these days that's the new do you theory believe that? Do you Tell believe us. That? it's not about what I believe, believe it's about what's the truth what's the truth testify what bro listen to me I've been asking for this for four years the UFC have been doing it for me and they say can you can you say exactly what you've been doing for you? 
I'm not gonna say no to this. You don't think I get fight with bald headed motherfucker Dana White? I argue with him all the time. You don't think, you know, I argue with Sean all the time? The guy I don't argue with is Mick, because Mick doesn't really argue with people, right? You know, mm. listen, you know, Hunter too, I respect these guys, but me and Ray, I argue with Ray more than all of them, right? Because Ray is a fucking hard headed motherfucker. And one more thing, let me let me make something clear. John Fitch. I like John fucking Fitch, right? I train with him, I spar with him. But John, he, how the fuck John Fitch said, these guys cannot be a fair pay a million dollars. I got five, four millionaires that all got paid a million dollars each. Listen, give their respect to their respect do be a fair paid everybody. And the whole thing, what I see in this business, manager, favor promoters. Oh, I'm gonna put all my guys here. I'm put all my guys here. Shut the fuck up and put your guys where the guys the best for their career. And a lot of great managers are there too. Not all of them, some of them, you know? But the whole thing is, I'm in my own league. I don't care what everybody does. I don't. If they think I work for the UFC, fine. If they think I work for VFL, fine. Guess what? I, I want to work for one FC too. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's, like, it's ridiculous. You know, Kevin Gaslin won. Because Kevin Gaslin just beat Jacqueline. Jacqueline just beat Chris Weidman. You understand? And this is a great matchup. Would Marlon get a title shot? You people going to say, oh, Ali work for the UFC? Listen, the UFC was trying to, to smash Henry Cejudo. They was trying to make TJ De La Shaw go down and beat him and kick him out of the UFC. You don't think I know what's going on? Henry Cejudo would have lost, would have got released, and probably went to an FC. What are you guys talking about? You know, I'm listen. What I'm doing, I'm in the business of changing people's lives, right? Mm. Guess what? Ray Borg got on your show, right? Mm. Who's been supporting Ray Borg? Ray Borg got not fighting. What he told you, mm. right? Yeah. Razak Al Hassan, right? This man, who's been supporting him, right? But I don't talk about what I do because you lose. The good deed. If you do a good deed, don't talk about it. You understand? But at the end of the day, man, listen. I understand. Listen. If if you if if you if you might support me, thank you so much. If you not support me, fuck you. <laughs> That's it. I don't care, bro. I used to. The stuff used to bother me. Oh, this guy say something. This guy say something. I can give a fly. You know what? I understand. I'm the biggest platform in the world. The Ariel Hawaii show. EST. ESPN, but at the end of the day, hey, you know, I'm just a, I, I'm a humble kid from Egypt, man. I've been through so much in my life. I can never imagine I've been here today. I'm here today. You know, I'm here today. And I did it by all. Listen, give me my respect. Man. He works so hard. You can say whatever I want. I, don't yeah. want I, I work so hard. I work so hard. Uh, and, and nobody can take away from me. But guess what? This is not about me. Yes. Keep calling, keep calling me. This is this not about me. This is 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 not about me. Ali, we have to. Yes. We we have we we are out of time. I'm sorry to cut it short, but it's uh, good to talk to you as always. I hope you feel better. Uh, always... Kevin Gaslin is the next UFC middleweight champion. He's gonna knock out Robert Whitaker in two rounds. All right, you heard it here first. Thank you, Ali. Be safe oh. out there. Okay, don't get don't get poisoned. Oh. Be yeah. safe. Bye. All right, we need Goodbye. you. Okay, there he is. Ali Abdelaziz, all fired up. All right, let's move along to our next guest. Uh, patiently standing by, Leon Edwards fighting Gunnar Nelson on March 16th in London, England. Let's go to the Skype machine and say hello to Leon Rocky Edwards. Uh, Leon, I am sorry for keeping you waiting. I don't know if you heard our last answer, but it went like five minutes long. Ali uh, likes to talk, so I apologize about that. All good, brother. All good. How you been? Good? Yes, I am doing very well, my friend. Uh, good to talk to you. Good time. Are we so I, I know that last week you and Darren kind of stole the show, but you have a fight on your hands against a very tough guy in Gunnar Nelson. Are you now are you now kind of putting the Darren stuff behind you and, and, and just gonna focus on Gunnar because he's no slouch, as you know? Exactly, exactly. I was just telling the facts in the press conference. I was telling <laughs> telling the guys that was the fight to make and that was it. You know what I mean? So now I'm hundred percent focused on Gunnar Nelson. The, the, the kid is a is, is a monster, you know what I mean? So that that's where I'm at now. Why haven't you fought Leon, since June of last year, why has it been so long to get you? A fight? I mean, by the time you fight, it's going to be almost nine months. 
Yeah, I know. I, I meant to fight in December um, versus George Masado. He accepted a fight and then he pulled out because um, it says he wants to fight uh, Nick Diaz. He meant to fight Nick, Nick Diaz and that, that, that didn't happen. So now, now here we are. And so was it a little weird sitting right next to Masvidal as you were talking about him? You guys were sitting right next to each other. Was that awkward? Nah, I, I, I couldn't give a flying shit, Errol, to be honest with you. I was, I, I, I was speaking facts and I was telling him he was meant to fight me. Then, So it is what it is. We're here now and I got a good good fight on my hand going to Nelson. And after beating him, I've been, seven, I've been a seven-fight winning streak. So that, that's where I'm at. Uh, behind the scenes, because he didn't say much to you while the whole thing was going on, but behind the scenes, did Masvidal say anything to you? He didn't say much. <laughs> it was funny because we, we were in the same hotel together, and as my as my the whole, as the lift came down, he was like standing right there in front of me. Wow. <laughs> but no, 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 nothing was said, and I went my way, he went his way, and that that was it. To the best of your knowledge, what has the UFC told you about why they didn't give you the Darren Till fight? Because it did seem like a no-brainer. It was England versus England, Birmingham versus Liverpool. It seemed like the perfect fight for that venue. Why didn't they end up giving it to you? Do you know? From what I've heard, I've, they, they, they mentioned it to Till. Till said they didn't want to fight. Um, and then the UFC came back to me and, and told me that they would rather build both guys and then make a fight down the line. So... I think that's a, that's that's the plan to build 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 us both, keep winning and make it a bigger fight down the line. Initially, when you found out you weren't getting the main event, how disappointed were you? Uh, I was pissed, but like I said, Gunnar Nelson is still a is, is a big name. Me and Gunnar Nelson has been around um, since the Bama days in in Europe when he's fighting Europe. We were on the same show together, and we were both getting mentioned together back then. So now to get the get, get the opportunity to fight him now on in the UFC and to prove my point that I am the best. Um, well to wait in Europe, no one in the world. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. Do you feel like Gunnar Nelson, even though he's not as highly ranked as Darren Till, is arguably tougher than Darren Till? Yeah, hundred uh, percent. I I probably edge him over Darren Till, um, technical wise. Like I said, Darren Till's a striker. There's tens of dozens of strikers in the UK that fights exactly like Darren Till. You know what I mean? Um, Gunnar Nelson. He, he, he brings something different to the table. He's coming, like, everyone knows what he's going to do. He comes to shoot for the takedown and get the back and go for the choke. But I, I'll be ready and I'm looking forward to it. He looked phenomenal in his last fight. His, his, his body was changed. He was, you know, he, he has looked good in the past in the UFC, but just what he had done as far as his conditioning was concerned. Did you see his last fight yeah. um, in Toronto? And were you impressed with what you saw out there? I, I, I saw the fight. I didn't thought it did nothing different than what it normally does. Um, I thought he was losing up to up until that point. Mm. Um, when he got the when he got the elbow, you know what I mean. Um, I think it looked more messy than what it was because the blood. If we're in for the blood, I didn't, technically they did the same exact thing that it does every single fight. Right. You know what I mean. So it's probably the, the blood made it look worse than what it was, but it, it did look good, and I'm looking forward to the challenge. Is it fair to say that if all goes well on March 16th for you that? You you want the winner of the main event? Is that what you want, or are you setting your sights past the winner? I think that makes sense. Whoever wins um, a March March the 16th, uh, that makes sense. Um, I should fight the winner and go from there. I've been in a seven fight win streak now. I'll beat the winner of that. I've been an eight fight win streak. Then tower shot. That's my plan for the year. So I fight in March. I go again in in June July, and then end of the year I should be title contender. Has the UFC told you if you get by Gunner that that's what they're going to give you? Are they, are they telling you what their plan is for you? They they, they mentioned nothing to me at all, but that's my plan in my head, and that's that's my focus. Was it uncomfortable for you, or because you know you're a pretty mild mannered guy, but you were talking a lot like that wasn't the typical Leon Edwards that we've seen in the past at at these media events. Did you say to yourself, okay, I need to make some noise here, or was that just you being a little bit annoyed and and feeling like you had to speak up? I was just speaking up and just speaking facts. Um, like I said, everyone, everyone in Twitter, everyone in social media, knew that was a fight to make. So I was just telling, telling the fans and telling the reporters that that was the fight to make. You know what I mean? Um, Liverpool versus Birmingham. The, the, the can't be two number. The can't be two contenders in, in the UK. There the can only be one. <laughs> and I feel that's me. You know what I mean? So that, that's all. That's all I was saying. Let's just prove he's the number one in in, in the UK, then go from there. But for some reason. They didn't want it. USC didn't want it. And now here we are. Going to Nelson. Do you feel like you have to speak up more to get those bigger fights? That that at the end of the day in this game, having a colorful personality, being outlandish, 
being the squeaky wheel that gets the great is, is is that what you need to yeah. do to take you to that next step uh, i feel so like a couple of years ago winning ain't enough no more you know what i mean i feel you have to like and it's entertainment end of the day so you have to entertain you have to talk you have to be loud and i don't i don't feel winning is enough no more in in, in the usa does that bum you out nah it is, it is. i keep <laughs> i'll keep winning anyway just keep winning and show my personality so that's it I was surprised uh, to a degree, just given the fact that you fight there, that your your brother Fabian, who's you know turning into one of the best prospects in the UK, ended up signing with with Bellator, not the UFC. How did that go down, and why did he ultimately choose Bellator over the UFC? I don't know. I, I, the kid is in, in in his own. He's doing his own thing. You know, what I mean, I would never force him to follow my route or whatever. He he, he likes it over there and. No, if there is fine this weekend, next weekend, um, is is fine in Bellator. I, I think this weekend is fine in Bellator. Yeah. Um, versus a, a 16 fight, um, veteran. He's only five and zero. Oh, you know what I mean? The kid is a savage, and I'm looking forward to seeing him go out there and perform and showing the world just how good he is. Will you be at that fight? Yeah, I, I, I corner, I corner him for every fight. Okay. <laughs> it, it's nerve wracking, but I do it every fight. Probably more nerve wracking than your own fights. That's yeah. that's what I hear. Yeah. About. The worst. Yeah, exactly. Like, because it, it, out you control, you can't control it. Whatever happens is up to him then, isn't it? So, it, it's mad. <laughs> it's a mad feeling. Are you bringing in anyone different to try to mimic, uh, you know, Gunner's style? Uh, not only his his ground game, but his striking style is a little bit different. Are you going to bring in any different training partners, new training partners, to try to mimic him? Ground ground game wise, um, I feel we got everything here I need in Birmingham. Um, striking wise, like I said, he. The strikers, ten of a dozen in the UK. I can get people to mimic him all, all at once. You know what I mean? Um, I've got training partners that's training good at Nelson, and so I kind of got a gist of his game. And I've been watching him for many years now, and I, I kind of know what he's gonna come with. Where's your Patrick Ewing poster, by the way? Uh, <laughs> you took it down. <laughs> nah, it's in the room now. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. I, 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 I didn't think you put it up just for the interview, right? I thought it was a fixture at your nah, house. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> nah, nah. It's up now. Well, well, I'm looking next, next to my poster. Okay, my perfect. Main, main poster. Don't turn your back on a fellow Jamaican, my man. You know, you got the power of Patrick behind you. Nothing can go wrong. Exactly, exactly. Like I said, Jamaica, when Jamaica's behind you, you could, no one can beat you. That's right, that's right. Um, I'm looking uh-huh. forward to it. What a great, you know, double header that is as far as main event, co main event. Darren Till versus Jorge Masvidal, Leon Edwards versus Gunnar Nelson. Tremendous fights at 170 pounds. Uh, March 16th. At the O2 in London, I believe tickets are almost sold out if they're not sold out already. So it's going to be a great atmosphere um, coming up in just a month and a half time. And that's on ESPN Plus here in America. Thanks for doing this, Leon. Appreciate it. Best of luck in training. Thank you, Errol. Good to speak to you. Yep, there he is. Rocky Edwards, a.k.a. Leon Edwards. His brother, Fabian Edwards, competing for Bellator this weekend as well, as he said. But March 16th, it goes down in London on ESPN+. Plus. There are some of the notable fights that you can see on that card. And look at that. Prelims at 12. Main card at 3 p.m. on ESPN+. Plus. Darren Till versus Jorge Masvidal. Leon Edwards versus Gunnar Nelson. Also of note... Volkan Ozdemir against Dominic Reyes, a very important fight at 205 pounds. And then, of course, a fight that was just announced, Mark Casey versus Joe Duffy, also taking place on that card. All right, let's move along and talk about UFC 234. In my opinion, it's a two-fight card as far as big names are concerned. There's the main event, Robert Whitaker versus Kevin Gaslin, but the people's main event, my friends, is in the co-main event, and it's Anderson Silva versus Israel Adesanya, and it goes down this Saturday night on pay-per-view from Rod Laver Arena in Melbourne, Australia. Joining us now via the magic of Skype, how cool is this? I believe he just woke up. The one and only Israel, the last style bender, Adesanya, joins us right now. Israel, how are you, and good morning. Good morning, my man. How are you? I really appreciate you doing this. Did you just wake up? Yeah, without any help. I just got up by myself because I'm a big boy. Wow, what a legend. Are you annoyed that you had, <laughs> that you had to wake up early? Nah, it's easy. I was already uh, up anyway, so yeah, wake up a little bit so I, a little bit so I can um, 
yeah, it'd be coherent for this. <laughs> well, I appreciate you doing it very much. I know it's like 7.30 in the morning over there in, in uh, Melbourne. So thanks so much for doing it, Israel. Uh, it is finally here. This fight week is here. This is, I mean, this to me feels like, like I said, the people's main event. It's so fun, you know, like the fascinating style matchup, the backstory, all that stuff and more. What does it feel like to you? Does it really feel like your typical fight or does this one feel a little different, a little more special? Uh, honestly, being like 100, it just feels like a regular fight. Wow. Um, just being, yeah, being here now in Melbourne, fight week. As soon as I packed up re yesterday, ready to leave, my whole, like, my body just knows, oh, yeah, we're doing this shit again. All right. And then it just goes into the same routine, same mode. So it was just like another fight. I heard a story, uh, Israel, that you had to go to Sydney to see Dana White and convince him to put you on this card and to make this fight against Anderson, that they wanted to save you for another card. Is that true? Yeah, uh, I was supposed to headline the ESPN card, but um, yeah, uh, I think it was at first they wanted to with Anderson or Jacare, but Jacare was too hurt from the Chris Weidman fight, and it was too close. So, um, yeah, I was ready to go in New York, but I kind of just put my idea better, and yeah, they didn't like my idea. It was just me and him in a small room, and we talked for about maybe forty minutes, and yeah. Well, I'm very persuasive, so <laughs> I was able to change his mind. I would imagine that you didn't only talk about Anderson for 40 minutes. What else did you guys speak about? Spoke about a few things, need to know bases. <laughs> but um, we talked about what happens after the fight. Oh. And we talked about me fighting, you know, because I think at one point while we were talking, while I was speaking, he, he looked at me and said, are your knuckles always like that? And I just said, look, Dana, this hit my first rodeo. I'm not like, you know, one of these kids that jumps in the UFC too quickly. Like, I've been doing this for a long time. So, yeah, he got to have a look at the moose knuckle. And, um, <laughs> yeah. Apart from that, we just talked about life as well a little bit. And just, yeah, it was cool. It was a good meeting. Was that your first extended sit-down with Dana? Yeah, my first extended sit-down with him one-on-one. -on -one. Interesting. And... Yeah, it was good. Because I remember you saw him at the club, right? In Vegas? Yeah, that was right. Uh, after 226, it was me, him, uh, Mick. I just kind of walked into the wrong room by accident. And then, <laughs> yeah, we just kind of stood around, talked some shit. And then I ghosted it because, you know, business. <laughs> yes, you have to leave them wanting more. So what do you say about after the fight? What happens? Uh, you'll see. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. I can't say too much, but... What I want to do is uh, I just want to bring back some some pizzazz to fighting, some pizzazz. So things are going to play out the way I, I plan. Then, yeah, things I want to I want to erupt. I want to light up Rod Laver Arena and explode it at the end. Whoa. Can you give us a hint here? I mean, yeah. usually someone would say like, oh, title shot. But that seems a little more <laughs> a little more uh, involved. Like I said, I want to light up Rod Laver Arena light at the up. end. Okay. So, and boom, make that whole plate explode. So, yeah, in time, in time. Patience, Ariel. Is it is it imperative that Rob Whitaker wins on, on Saturday slash Sunday for this plan to play out the way you want it to? Does it involve him? Uh, I'd like him to win. I feel like if he wins, yeah, I mean, I'm not even going to wink. Just if you, you can play it out, look at the division, the way it's set up. Look at the division. Yes. I mean, yeah, just if you use common sense in the process of elimination. <laughs> I can't say too much. Okay. I can't say too much. You're making me, you, you, you're gaffing me, man. No, no, no. But Anderson has come out and said that he was promised a title shot. So I would assume the same stipulation is on the table for you. Yeah, he got honey dicked. He got honey dicked into taking this fight, which is cool. Oh. And I like, I like, yeah, I like that he got honey dicked into taking a fight with a title shot. And in another universe, in another, like, timeline, if he beats me, then I think he deserves the shot because I am the guy that I feel like, you know, if he can beat me in another timeline, in another, like, dimension, then yes, he deserves every every right at a title shot and then he can fight Rob or Kelvin and then right off into the sunset. That's in another timeline. But in mm. this timeline, in this game where I'm player one, it's different. 
So, yeah, uh, he got honey dick regardless. He's taking a fight. For those that don't know, what does that term mean? Could you explain that? I got it from the movie um, with Seth Rogen, and uh, it's the one about King John Un. Uh, the interview, the oh, interview, yeah. honey dick. It's like, it's kind of like a rope a dope. Ah, way, honey dick. He got, was con. He got, yeah, got con like a fox, you know, just like dangle. Hey, you want this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you think Anderson respects you? Hmm, that's a different question. Do I think he respects? I don't know. I don't know, but I don't give a fuck. I don't really care. Um, I think he's a nice guy. I think he's a troll, just like me. So, yeah, I don't really buy into all this. Like, look when he fought Nick Diaz. You know, Nick Diaz didn't even say shit throughout the whole fight, leading up to it. And then in the fight, Nick Diaz went full on Nick Diaz at him. So, yeah, um, before the fight, whatever, I'm cool. He's cool. But in the fight, Let's just say, never go full retard. I'm going full retard. So what kind of Anderson do you expect to see? He hasn't fought in two years. Um, initially, I don't know if you saw when this fight was announced, everyone was like, oh, what a mistake. Am I hurting your ears? What's happening? Am I hurting no, you? It's not you. It's not you. Oh, okay. No, you're fine. Um, I'm talking. You know, it, it's always interesting at 43, what kind of fight are you going to see, especially with the long layoff? On, I know everyone's going to say, oh, you know, preparing for the best Anderson, blah, blah, blah. But, but honestly, what kind of Anderson are you expecting to see? A slower Anderson? An old, like, what, what, how do you describe what you're expecting to fight? So initially, Anderson did not take the fight. Initially, he said he didn't want the fight. And then that was around the Friday. And then by the Sunday, I get a call from Eugene. And he said, he said yes. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, Anderson. He said yes. And I was like, what? So for me... I knew they, they made him an offer he can't refuse. And that's when later on it came out like he got honey dick with the title shot. Hmm. But, but what I heard, uh, I can't, I don't know, maybe McMahon had said he spoke to his old Taekwondo, taekwondo coach or something and he just told him to take the fight because it's a good challenge. So I choose to believe that rather than, you know, he's just doing this for the title shot. I choose to believe the fact that he wants to take this fight because he really wants to test himself even at 43 years old. And I think I'm going to bring back the Anderson of old. To get it. Like he's, he's probably trained the best and got prepped the best he's ever prepped in his, in, in his, in his last few fights. You know, I think he's been bored. He's been bored. Everyone's trying to take him down, you know, and now he finds a guy who wants to strike with him, wants to strike <laughs> with him. And yeah. So I, I think he's going to, he's going to come and be free and we can play the game. But one other thing. Yes. So, I keep hearing, like, it's like, oh, my God, Anderson and this part would have destroyed him, this and that. I'm like, look, even let him use TRT. I don't really give a fuck. But when, when people talk about his age, they, they kept on equating him to Rob, uh, what's his name, Chuck Liddell, because they kind of got announced around the same time. Mm -hmm. This ain't the same fight. This is not the same fight. And also, look, how old is Joe Romero? Uh, he's like 41, I think, at this point. Okay. So when he fought Robert Whitaker twice, and I think Robert Whitaker beat him twice, or one was a draw. I can't remember. Beat no him twice. one said, "Oh, yeah, beat him twice." Yeah, he said. No one said, "Oh, Romero's too old. You only beat up an old man." So when I beat Anderson, it's gonna be like, "Oh, you beat up an old Anderson." But with Rob Whitaker, he's beat up fucking Romero twice. So I don't understand what the disparity is. Like they're around the same age. Why are they giving me shit for beating up a legend? I mean. It, I don't really care either way, but that was just something I thought interesting. I was like, they they come in at me like I I decided I'm just gonna. I didn't know he was gonna be around at this time, but now that he's here, I have to take this fight because it's just destiny. Those are my shoes. Who aren't in my shoes won't understand. You think he'll be clean in this fight? Mm, I don't care. I don't know. I don't look. Anderson. He could. He doesn't need to prove anything. He's just doing this because. He wants to do the great show for his people, <laughs> for the fans. So, yeah, I'm it's a, just, you know, what was that? I know. I like your line saying that, you know, he's a troll. I'm a bigger troll. And that's why I feel like a scenario might play out on, on Saturday night where 
you are actually like mimicking him and doing his games. No one's ever done like the Anderson to Anderson. And I feel like you No, is that, is that not possible? Have you not thought of that? Scratch that. Scratch that. Okay. I'm going to do the Israel Adesanya to Anderson. Get that right. All right. This fair. is not me trying to mimic him on him. I've been, you go back to my first fight when I was just a wild stallion. When I, when I didn't know really much about distance, when I didn't know about feints, when I didn't know about shifting, shift hitting timing all that kind of shit i was just fucking around with people i was slapping people on the ass tapping them on the back of their head looking in the crowd that was just how i fought that was just how i played the game because it was fun i was having fun trolling these niggas man so yeah i want to just i mean he can try and troll me but well i grew up with the internet so i'm a bigger troll than him so we, we've talked in the past after your last fight about your your former foe uh, who beat you twice, Alex Pereira, coming out and talking smack. He actually brought him to his training camp and trained with him for this fight. What did you make of that? Yeah, I saw I saw him yesterday. Yesterday as I was... Uh, oh. I got, Uber Eats. I got Uber Eats yesterday, so I was waiting at the hotel. I went outside to go try and grab it, and I walked back, and I see them coming off the, off the van. I see them coming off the van, and it was all them. I think they were shocked to see me just standing there waiting for them. And, yeah, they shook ones. What are they going to do? Uh, what's Pereira going to do for him for this camp? Oh, you just got to go hit him with the, with the left hook, bro. And <laughs> he's going to fall. Okay. The fuck? They just did it to, like, try and shake me. But my guy, he's a troll. So that's a troll move. I don't care. Whatever helps you sleep at night. He's probably going to have him in the corner as well, yelling some shit to me in Portuguese or really bad English. I don't know. And I can't really hear anything anyway they're saying. So I just listen to my corner. I hear Eugene's voice, I hear Andre's voice, and I hear Twister yelling as well. Those are the only thing I, I, I hear in the, while I fight. So, yeah, I don't know. They can they can do whatever they want. You know, it's normal. <laughs> when, you, when you saw those guys yesterday, did you say anything to them, or did they say anything to you? Mm, I just looked. I knew they looked. And it was like seven of them. And I'm just standing there, bare feet, shorts on, hoodie on. And I kinda looked homeless. So I don't know what they I don't know what they what they made of me. They were probably just like, uh I don't know. I don't care. Have you faced off with him yet? Who's this? Anderson. Have you guys done a like a face off yet? I've never met him in my life. Wow. When's the yeah. first one? It has to be coming up today or tomorrow, right? Mm. I think there's a press conference on Friday. Okay. That's what I've heard, a press conference on Friday. But then um, there's an open workout as well on Thursday. And I'll probably see him at the open workout. And, yeah, uh, I don't know. I'll see him at some point. Just, yeah, touch his skin. Make sure he's real. He's human. He bleeds. And I can kill him. It's yeah. a... It's it's such a fascinating thing because I can't like if I would have told the Israel Adesanya who watched Anderson Silva beat Patrick Cote at UFC 90 that you'd be fighting him at Rod Laver Arena in 2019, you probably wouldn't have believed me, right? Hell no. I'd be like, nah, he's he'll be done by then. He's not gonna keep fighting till 42. So yeah, I mean he's still here. He's still with it. You know, he he did Bisping a whole fucking number man and a half. Like, he lost that fight. He's calling me. Hold up. Oh, it flipped you. Sorry. No problem. Yeah, sorry. I just yeah, I got another call. I don't know the folks calling me on Skype. Man, in the middle of our interview? Trying to scam me and shit. How <laughs> rude. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, also, after the open workout, yes. um, is it Ash at MMA Warehouse? Oh, yeah. I have, the whole, I have all the information. You want me to say it? You got the info. Oh, yeah, you can you can plug it up. Plug it up there. Yeah, right? engage fightwear. Meet and greet this Thursday, the seventh of February, from seven p.m. to eight thirty p.m. at the MMA Fight Store at Melbourne CBD. There it is. You see that? Look at that little oh, poster we've oh, got they there. Ready. They got the graphic. They got the graphic. We got the Man, Ash really is sweet. my guy. I gotta hook up my guy Ash. Uh, <laughs> Israel Adesanya, Kai Kara France, and Shane Young will all be there. Check it out. This Thursday, February 7th, from 7 to 8.30 p.m. local time. That's local in Melbourne. So check that out. You'll be there. That's like two days before your fight. Yeah. I'll, no, it was right after the open workout. So right after the open workout. Okay. We'll head over there, shoot some stuff to the people, kiss some babies, smile and wave, the whole pizzazz. And then, yeah, 
off of my way away. And also, yeah, it'll be heaps of merch as well, by the way. Okay. Merch on sale all week, even from now, starting now. MMA Fight Store. All right. Get there. Get um, there. Have you played this fight out in your mind a million times, like even dating back to when you... Someone's calling you again? What's going on? Again. It must bitch. be Anderson. It must be Anderson trying to troll hold our on, interview. Hold on, wait, wait. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's someone called Jessica Rose434. Answer, you bitch. Anderson gonna <laughs> knock you the fuck out. What? Watch out for a flying knee, you bum. I have no <laughs> idea how to even go on my Skype. <laughs> call. Can I just, can I pick this? Sure, I, I guess. Go ahead. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is the craziest thing. Maybe it's Jessica Rose Clark. Maybe it's Jessica Rose Clark trying to troll Anderson. Uh, excuse me, Israel Adesanya. A random person calling Israel and telling him that he's going to get knocked out. Wow. Apparently not liking the uh, the stuff I'm back, that he I'm was. Back, I'm oh, back. There, who was it? Was it was yeah, it Jessica Rose Clark? I have no idea who it was. It was just some name. I don't even know how to got my Skype name. <laughs> my Skype name is fucked up. It's like a whole code matrix type thing. Yeah. So they call. Yeah. Weird. People are weird, man. Um, can I just ask? Have you? played out this fight in your mind a million times, even like when you were a fan, like, what if I did fight Anderson? This is how it would go. <laughs> Holy <laughs> <Bruce> fuck. <is> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm 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 to I'm gonna end this. I'm going to block them. I'm going to block them. Hold up. I don't know how to do this. You could still talk. We, how we... do I do? Yeah. We can still talk. Can you see me? Yeah, yeah. We're all good. Don't worry about it. Um, you'll come back. All but right. Have you played it out in your mind? Like, you already see the way this fight is going to go? Holy <laughs> fuck. Holy shit. This person... I'm so sorry, Ariel. I don't no know how to block people. On no problem. Side. I'm trying to block. There we go. Block, block. That is weird, Gone. man. Fucking weird. At, the, at this time as well. Yeah. Conspiracy. The Ooh. nerve. Anderson sending his people. <laughs> He's on all levels. See? Trolling. <laughs> They're trying to troll me already. The games have begun. Um, so I was just... Um, yeah, I put this fight out of my head. I put this fight out of my head like all the time, all scenarios. And I even said on the countdown, look, it was on the, no, it was on the engage uh, clip. I said, like, a lot of people in my situation now, they'd be too nervous to, they'd be too nervous to open up because they feel like, what if I fail? But for me personally, I don't give a fuck. If I go in there and I just like, like this Jessica Rose person says, get flying need in the first 10 seconds and get knocked out, that'll suck. Trust me. Mm. But, what I really want to do, I don't care about wins or losses. What I really want to do is just show off in this fight. I really want to show off. I want to show who I am. I want to show a lot more of my skills than I did in the Brad Tavares fight. In the Brad Tavares fight, I went in. I, like, showed off some shit, some nice, some, you know. I mean, I showed how strong I was, how fast I was, how creative I was. So in this fight, I want to do more of that. That was my favorite fight last year, the Brad Tavares fight, because I was five rounds of fun times. So this fight, yeah. I mean, if it makes it to the second round, I'll be happy. I can't wait. Great stuff, Israel. Thanks for doing this. Again, I really appreciate it. Best of luck this week. Best of luck in the fight. It's going to be amazing. Israel Adesanya versus Anderson Silva, one of the most intriguing yeah. fights that the UFC has put together in quite some time this Saturday here in America, UFC 234. Fun stuff. Israel, much respect, my man. We'll talk to you after the fight. Mucho respeto, Ara Hawani. Thank you. call this Jessica person back. I'm, I'm on block them. I want to call them back. Remember <laughs> after in New York, I put this guy on blast who kept on fucking with me and not realizing I put him on. I, I screen recorded him. Then I put him on blast after my fight. I might do the same thing again with this motherfucker. Yes, do it and Stay let us know. Tuned. I got I to gotta, I gotta keep myself entertained during fight week. It's a wedding game now, so I fuck with the trolls too. Tell Peace. us how it goes. Later, there he is, the last style bender himself. And again, you can see him, uh, Kai Kara France, Shane Young, this Thursday, February 7th at the MMA Fight Store, 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Okay, so that's the co-main event. Main event is Kelvin Gastelum challenging for a belt for the first time, the middleweight title against Robert Whitaker. Robert Whitaker finally getting that opportunity to defend his title in his home country of Australia. And how exciting is this? Kind enough to join us so early in the morning over there in Sydney, I do believe. I do believe he leaves tomorrow. Here he is, the man himself, Robert Whitaker. Robert, how are you? <laughs> Very good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, it is a pleasure, Robert. Thanks so much for doing this. And am I right? Tomorrow you are going to, uh, to Melbourne. You're in Sydney right now? Yeah, yeah, it's great. You know, being able to be home for as long as I have been, it's, it's just been yeah, unbelievable. 
And so we all remember what happened leading up to what was supposed to be your first time defending your title in Australia last year. And it was just all kinds of things, bad bad stuff happening, weird things happening. Were you, are you the superstitious type? Are you the type that was kind of stressed throughout this training camp, hoping that nothing goes wrong? It seems like we've made it okay, but were you kind of freaked out by last year's experience? Uh, you know, I think it, it, it wasn't because it wasn't just because of last year's experience. I think it's every fighter's experience, to be honest. Like anything that can go wrong will go wrong. It's just a matter of trying to mitigate that and 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 work around whatever you know whatever's happening. So, how did this camp go? This camp was great. This camp was great. You know, uh, I, I I managed to hit tick a lot of boxes, hit a lot of skill gaps, and um, yeah, you know, put in a lot of work. Not, 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 not only in my skill sets and, and, and for this fight, but like with a, a lot of my other projects with the, the Gracie program, the Aboriginal Pathway program, and, and, and dealing with a lot of that stuff. What, what programs are you talking about, for those that don't know? Uh, well, we, have a, uh, we, we run an Aboriginal Gracie's uh, Pathway program that, that we run out of our gym and have, have a few business partners that, that, that work on that and I go in there and do some mentoring. On the, on the side when, you know, obviously I'm, I'm not focusing on a fight or, or missing training. Would it be fair to call that, like, was this something that you dreamed of, being a champion, defending your belt in Australia? Was this something, like, when you were planning your career, man, this is, this is an experience that I want to have. You're about to have it this weekend. Was that something that you thought of and dreamed of? Yeah, it's a, it's a huge milestone for me. You know, one, one of the, a big milestone for me was, the first one was I wanted to get the belt and bring it home. And uh, you know, uh, you know, I was fortunate enough to do, to do that. And I guess the next step was to defend the belt at home. And you know, here we are. <laughs> After two straight fights against a guy who's built like a brick house, Yoel Romero, and I, I, I named it the fight of the year last year, one of the rounds of the year. You you took shots from him, had to fight him back to back, dropped you, you come back, all that. You break your hand in the fight. After that experience, does it feel like you can do anything now? Because I, I can't imagine anything worse than going, you know, 10 rounds against Yoel Romero and winning both of them, but taking his best shots. It, it sort of feels like at this point you could do anything. Do you feel the same? <laughs> Thank you for that, by the way. With um, your round of the year, fight of the year, like I appreciate that acknowledgement. And um, yeah, you know, I, I, I've, said it, I've said it before that the, the rest of the division should be dissuaded by the fact that I took Romero's best shots. I fought him for, for 10 rounds, you know, uh, 50 minutes of, of fighting, and uh, come away with the win twice. Uh, injured both fights. You know, I, 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 I'm not to be underestimated. I, I, I'm not going anywhere, you know, and uh, you, you need to come in there with your, with your best game to try and take me out. Your last three fights, two against Romero, uh, the other fight against Jacare Souza, you know, all killers, all great opponents. Do you consider Kelvin on their level? It's, it still feels like he maybe doesn't get the attention and respect that he deserves at 185 pounds. Do you consider him to be equally as tough, maybe even tougher than those guys? Yeah, definitely. You know, um, he definitely doesn't get the, the props he deserves. You know, he doesn't get the looks he deserves. Uh, but, you know, I was... I was, I, was, that, that was, I was that guy. That was me. Yeah. And, uh, and, and look what I did. You know, I, I, um, I'm very aware that his skill set is very good. He's uh, very well-rounded. But a, a bigger thing, I think, that, that plays a big role is that he's tough and he's hungry. He's young. And, um, you know, the, the, those three combinations mixed with any fighter is, is, is dangerous. Well, I would still argue that I think that you're the most underrated UFC champion right now. Uh, you, you have taken that throne from perhaps Demetrius Johnson or Daniel Cormier from a year or two ago that you still don't get the attention that you deserve. And I know you've always said that you don't care about that stuff, that you know the belt is just a thing. You're just going out there trying to win as many fights. You're not here for all the attention. But am I on to something here? Like, like if you were being honest with yourself, you don't get the same kind of attention as the other champions. Do you agree? Yeah, I, I, I don't. But... um. I guess, I guess it makes it all the more fun for me to try and go out there and, and show people and, and convince them that, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm I'm the real deal. What was up with Dana White saying recently that you don't do media? That you, every time I ask you to come on, you come on. What was up with that? He was. I felt like he was almost blaming it on you. <laughs> no, I, I feel I feel there was a we were, there was something lost in communication, you know, between uh, some staff members and, and whatnot. I uh. I always try to jump at media commitments. Like I'm, I'm always. You, you yourself know that I'm. I'm always 
they responded to um to, to, to doing interviews and stuff like that. The the only thing that I have a problem with is is, is when they want me to to miss a training session to to hit an interview, and I'm like, well, you want me to win fights, or do you want me to do an interview? You can't have both. Like right. pick one. But if you work around me, like we, we we get it done. You know, me and you have always made it made it work, and we live on the opposite sides of the globe. So. <laughs> Well, it does seem like you cleared the air with Dana because he was in Australia to, I guess, award you the GQ. Um, was it the Sportsman of the Year? Was that was that the award that you received from him back at the yeah. end of 2018? Yes, it was. Yes, it was, and it was a very honorable occasion. So, so what what is that for? The, like, is it just the best athlete in Australia? Uh, I think I think it's just like a an outstanding sort of award for for, for the sportsman category. You know, the GQ magazine, obviously a very prestigious magazine. And um, to be able to receive that, you know, we're moving into the the, the limelight of, 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 like, your more mainstream sports now was, was, you know, unreal. Did you get a chance to sit down with Dana and clear the air? Oh, yeah. We we, we, we spoke and, uh, yeah, every, every, everything's understood. Like I said, it was just, you know, miscommunication. <laughs> okay. Um, are you getting? I know you're not in Melbourne right now, but from what I understand, the tickets sold out very quickly, and it feels to me like you know the 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 top two fights are really you know the marquee fights on this card. They're both in the same weight classes. You know, you got Anderson there, you've got Israel there, you've got you there. It feels like this is all about the middleweight division, and it's all being led by you. You are the face of this card in in many respects. Do you get the sense, even from home in Sydney, that this is a really big deal, or will you only truly understand that and feel that once you get to Melbourne tomorrow? No, it, it is a big deal. You know, um, uh, this is my home country and I'm the current champion and defending my belt on home soil. You know, this is, if you're, if you're a combat sports fan, this is, this is the fight to watch. This is the, the, the place to be. So, um, you know, I, 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 I go into this fight with, with those pressures and, and knowing that this is, you know, this is my stage and this is my limelight. It's, um, yeah, you know, it's just it's just is what it is. It's one of those things. I know you're focused on Kelvin and you're you're a true professional, but in the co-main event we do have Israel Adesanya versus Anderson Silva and both are implying that if they win, they get to fight you. Are you hoping that one wins over the other? Uh yeah, I <laughs> I, I don't really take sides with the middleweight division. I think it'll be a hard fight. I think um you know, both both guys are very very dangerous. So I'm very I'm definitely curious to see how this how that, that fight plays out. Um, yeah, I, I I got my eyes locked on, on on Kelvin. If I if I you know if I even blink or, or look past him for a second, you know, he'll take me out. So I'm gonna have to focus on him for now. Who do you think is gonna win that fight? Can I ask you that, Israel or Anderson? You know, it's a, it's a tough fight. I think I think Anderson. I think Israel would have been a hard fight for Anderson in Anderson's heyday, hmm. you know, and I think I think it's safe to say that Anderson's past his heyday at, at, at this point. Um, so, yeah, yeah, you know, that, that, I guess that's my opinion. But if if anyone can pull off something spectacular and out of the blue, it's, it's Anderson Silva. So it, it feels like, at least from your answer, that you're leaning towards Israel. Is that accurate? I, I would have to say he would be the favorite. Okay, um, and. Correct me if I'm wrong, a fight, be, you know, regardless of who Anderson is and his history and his past as champion, a fight between you and Israel in Australia or even in New Zealand, but I would imagine it would be in Australia because you're the champion, would be a bigger fight than you versus Anderson? Is that accurate? Uh, to be honest, if I'm fighting in Australia or New Zealand, I'm selling the house down. Like, <laughs> that's just, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're my home country. That's, that's just how, how it is. The beauty of this situation, you remind me a lot of George St. Pierre in the sense that George didn't talk a lot, no trash talk, no theatrics, yet put him as champion in Canada, that thing sells out in a matter of minutes. Your situation in Australia slash New Zealand feels like the exact same thing, like you're the second coming of George. We haven't had a champion with a similar personality to George's do what you are doing as far as ticket sales and gate is concerned. Have you, have you heard of that comparison and are you okay with that comparison? Uh, I, I haven't, but um, you know, I'm, I'm honoured. You know, George, I think George St. Pierre was one of the greatest warriors and um, martial artists of our time. So uh, to to be even, you know, in the same sentence as him like that is is, is a great thing. 
I know that you don't, in the past you've said that you didn't love the Bobby Knuckles um, nickname, moniker, but now I see that you're selling t-shirts with the nickname Bobby Knuckles on it. <laughs> so what's going on over here? Oh, my, um, <laughs> it, it, it's one of those things that uh, if, if you can't beat them, join them. <laughs> yes. In fact, according to your Instagram, all the shirts sold out? Yeah, they did. They did. You know, it was one of those things like uh, as soon as as soon as you say you don't like something yes. or you don't want to be called something, everybody just, everybody starts calling you it. So I, I never really wanted to oppose the name, but I, I didn't want to jump on board either. But uh, yeah, it seems to be to, to be my official second nickname now. So no, why not? Well, it seems like the fans are trying to tell you something here, and they want you to go with it. What are the chances? when Bruce Buffer says your name on, on Saturday slash Sunday that he actually calls you Robert Bobby Knuckles Whitaker? <laughs> uh, zero, zero. Come it's, on. Uh, you sold those, out T-shirts. It's one, of the, <laughs> it's one of the official, unofficial shirts, uh, nicknames. You do realize if you would have sold T-shirts that said the Grim Reaper, they're, they're not selling out as fast. Yeah, nowhere near, nowhere near. <laughs> right. I think you should, I mean, but maybe this approach of not embracing it, if you will, is actually working out and uh, making it even more popular. So, so what do I know? H how are things at home? Is, is that your kids in the background over there? Yeah, I'm trying to, um, I've, been try I've been trying to hide from them, but uh, they're, they're, they're good. They're good. They're, they're as crazy as, you know, three under three can be. Uh, are, they, are they coming to the fight? No, they are not. They are, so I'm looking forward to, to Wednesday when I... Well, I know my watch is, for that matter, <laughs> when, when we go to Melbourne to get to work. Okay, so you're keeping them home. You won't even bring them on the trip. It's, it's strictly a business trip. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, there's no time. It, 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 it's a time and a place for me to be selfish, for me to, to focus. You know, I, it, it, it's the, the time that I drive to the office, you know, and I have to distance myself from that sort of stuff. Kelvin has gone on the record and says he will knock you out in the first. His manager was on earlier saying that he will knock you out. What do you make of him continuing to, to stick by this prediction? Do you feel like he's not respecting you? Um, no, nah, you know, a lot of guys have said that. And um, a lot of guys have tried that. But, uh, you know, to, 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 to most of those guys, uh, disappointment. <laughs> What's your prediction? I'm coming in. I'm coming in really good. You know, I'm coming in probably the fittest, healthiest, and, and strongest I've ever been. So, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a great fighter on my bad day. Mm. So, <laughs> yeah, you can take that as you will. You have looked amazing uh, since going up to 185. No one has yet to defeat you. And again, I would say, uh, going through what you know, Yoel did in June, and then the previous summer, just absolutely incredible. You did it with one hand. Um, in the second fight, I am so excited to finally see you back in there, Robert, because it does feel like it's been a really long time, almost eight or so months to be exact. Very exciting stuff. Also getting to see you fight in Melbourne and defend that title in Melbourne. Of course, the last time you fought in Melbourne, you knocked out Derek Brunson in, in the first round. So it's always cool to see you fight back there. And it makes you, in my opinion, feel like an even bigger star. So I think that's going to be a cool byproduct as well. Thanks for doing this so early in the morning. Safe travels to Melbourne and good luck to you Sunday morning out there. Can't wait for the fight. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys having me on again. All right. Always a pleasure to talk to the middleweight champion of the world, one Robert Whitaker, coming off those two great wins over Yoel Romero. You'll recall UFC 213, UFC 225 to be exact. He got the unanimous decision victory over Romero the first time, then the split decision victory, and that's the lineup right over there. Prelims start at 6.15 on UFC Fight Pass. This is the first pay-per-view of the ESPN era, and as you can see, for pay-per-views, the prelims, the early prelims, if you will, will still be on Fight Pass. That's the last Fight Pass UFC fights, if you will, in America for pay-per-views, if that makes sense. It will only be on pay-per-views, UFC Fight Pass, the early prelims. Then you've got the uh, middle prelims, 8 to 10 on ESPN. And then you've got the main card headline by Robert Whitaker versus Kelvin Gaslam. That's on pay-per-view. Here's the lineup of stuff that's coming at you on the ESPN family of networks, either digital or linear. Friday, 7 p.m., official weigh-ins, live on ESPN+. Plus. And by the way, no ceremonial slash official weigh-in thing, this particular card. It's just one weigh-in. Because of the time difference, it's going to be the old-school weigh-in. So the quote-unquote ceremonials, those will be the official weigh-ins as well. You can watch those at 7 p.m. on ESPN+. Plus. 
Also, at 9 p.m. on ESPN+, Plus, we'll have the pre-show live on everyone's favorite platform. And then Saturday, look at Corporate Jake leaving out my radio show. Second time in a row. Why no love for our radio show, Corporate Jake? Explain yourself right now to the masses. No explanation from Corporate Jake. Look at that. Wait, I didn't get to read it. I didn't see the end. What's the end? I didn't get to read that. But there we go. Seven to eight, Ariel and the Bad Guy live on Twitter and YouTube. Really? I didn't know about that. And then 1 a.m. post show live on ESPN+. Plus. I'm not going to be in Melbourne, by the way. I don't know if you guys know this because I said I had to be back here on Monday to do the show. When you go to Australia, you can't be back. And guess what? Guess what? I can't miss this show. I can't do it. YouTube, Twitter, television, tomorrow, ESPN News and ESPN2. I can't miss this show. But I'll have plenty of coverage uh, 3 to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Saturday on ESPN Radio. I will be there. You can listen online. You can listen on the radio. You can listen on your car. All those places and more. Quickly before I go, a couple more things. Uh, Charles Oliveira, Damian Mai with the big wins this past Saturday in Fortaleza. We also had... Uh, the whole Amanda Nunes situation is ongoing. I will tell you more about that as the week goes on. And also, I wanted to tell you about one. Who did I want to tell you about? There was another guy. Jose Aldo. I spoke to you about him. Artem got released. I told you about everything. We covered it all. The show is over. Beltor this weekend as well, their first European event. Hey, Corporate Jake, I didn't say hit the music. And all of a sudden, he's getting a little trigger happy over there. What's happening? Jeez Louise. No, but it's been a fun day. We're out of time. UFC 234 this weekend first pay-per-view and by the way did you notice on saturday oh look at that what do we have over here that's the picture that's the ben Askren. something tells me it's not legit as promised on ariel hawani's show <laughs> there it is kamaro usman yes wearing the shirt and the afro i had no idea wow there it is legit Anyhow, thanks to all of you. I'm looking forward to this weekend. A lot more programming to come. And remember, tomorrow on the show, I'll tell you about my trip to California. Uh, last week, I'll give you my three stars of the week. We'll turn back the clock. There's still a lot more to come. MMA Reporters on Wednesday as well. Thanks to all our guests this week. It's been a fun day. I hope you enjoyed it. If you missed anything, check it out. iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Twitter. All those places and more. Thank you, Marlon Marais, Johnny Walker, Aspen Ladd, Ben Askren, Artem Lobov, Islam Makhachev, Ali Abdelaziz, Leon Edwards, Israel Adesanya, and the reigning defending UFC middleweight champion, Robert Whitaker. Back next week, same time and place. Until then, I say peace. I'm out of here.